Just text, I know it's a toss Oh, but I hate the fact that we lost such a The Uber pulling up on call Tell me as you trying to fall through I'ma leave it up to you What you wanna do? Look, I'm trying to spend this time with you No, we all for do what you're doing right now, right now. Baby, won't you swing my way? It's been a day and I've been thinking all oh, long I know I want you Long time since the last time Got a tab, we could run up Knew you from the way, now we grown up My look, yeah, made the realest ones nervous But if you want it, tap in I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crash it We could keep the pace on slow Now I'm paid by the sentence Taking my time with it Baby, give me yours So I could get some butterflies trapped in your rib cage. Let me know we on the same page Give me with a text, voice, note, or an emoji Waiting on day for your name on the ID So if you want it, tap it I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crush it And we could keep the pace on slow
free in my mind Conversations, debates, and advice that keep you turned up. My skin is simply flawless. It's glowing. It's perfect. It is clear. It is beautiful. Do you want to know why? This baby right here. Right here. Shea Butters. This 
makes the world go round. This makes your skin happy. Your skin thanks you and throws a party every single time you put it on. This literally is the secret to happy skin, to happy, clear, moisturized, beautiful, perfect, glowing skin. And I hate to tell you guys, but if you don't have shea butters, you might as well wear a paper bag over your head. Yours, mine, ours. I could do this for hours, sit and talk to y'all for hours. I want to give you your flowers with some champagne showers, all the shrimp and lobster towers. But it's y'all that gets devoured. Ooh, what I do, what I do, y'all empowered. I give you a superpower. Together the world could be ours. It could be, but too bad you will pick me right over there from the mammosphere. You don't like what I do. You know you don't like what I do. I'm cool with it, though. I ain't mad at you. It be what it be. So for those of you who are not part of the mammosphere and you enjoy being over here, welcome. It's your girl, Princella the Queen Maker live raw in the building I'm going live on a day that I don't typically go live right I thought I would do I thought I would do y'all a solid hold on I don't like the way this uh, sound is coming in here hold on Yeah, 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 yeah. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Mm. And ch -ch -ch -ch. <sighs> the sound is all right. Is the sound all right on y'all in? Let me know if the sound is all right on y'all end. I don't like the way it sounded in my headsets. Just waiting on the answer. Y'all like, is the sound cool over there? Okay, sound is good. I'm just going to have to. I'm going to be the one that have to tolerate it. All right. So, um, yeah. So, I, I, I stumbled across a video. Right. Right. I stumbled across a video that I wanted to uh, go over. Because I think it's really important that we realize that what the true issue is. In this so-called race war, where everybody want to hold on to race and stuff, right? So we gonna we gonna sit up here and listen to a video together, some history. Mm -hmm. Six hundred and twenty-two people up in the house. Why don't we raise the the likes a little bit? All right. Pull this around over here. Slavery is as old as human civilization, dating back beyond recorded history 
and it exists even still today. Every culture on every continent practiced some form of slavery, whether it was serfdom, indentured servitude, or collective peasantry. However, when the slave trade is mentioned, people normally think of the black African slave trade to the Western Hemisphere during the colonial period from 1500 to the mid-1800s as practiced by the here. European colonial powers. Estimates range from 10 to 13 million Africans being brought to the New World, with around 10 million surviving to be sold in North and South America, as well as in the Caribbean islands. Of this number, the best estimate is that 450,000 went to the British, French, and Spanish colonies in what is now the United States and Caribbean. Brazil alone received almost 5 million, the rest going to the Spanish colonies in South America. Slavery still exists in the world, yet most of the major powers ignore the fact and refuse to even acknowledge that it still exists. It is still quite active. Yet, six decades before the American Civil War, a war was fought by the United States on foreign shores to try and stop the white slave trade. What was the white slave trade? Does it still exist? Who were the Barbary pirates? What was the result of American intervention? How did it occur and what was the aftermath? And how did nine U.S. Marines and their mercenaries make history and give birth to a legendary fighting force while also ending the white slave trade in North Africa? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper. Y'all ready to hear this? Let's rock and roll. History professor, historian, and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. During the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the world was on fire as France and Britain were engaged in the Napoleonic Wars which was another series of conflicts just like the Seven Years' War, again involving every nation in Europe. The Seven Years' War was also known as the French and Indian War in the United States. Both these conflicts were fought on every continent and on every ocean and in every colony. Even during these protracted wars, the transatlantic slave trade continued. It was big business. While the European powers were destroying each other, Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States from March 4th, 1801 to March 4th, 1809. And he had several major issues to contend with. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 from France doubled the size of the United States. The Yazoo territorial disputes in Western Georgia were hotly contested. The launching of the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804 to explore the newly acquired country and the contested issue of slavery. In 1806, Jefferson denounced the international slave trade as a violation of human rights and called upon Congress to criminalize it. Congress responded by approving the act prohibiting importation of slaves the following year. No longer could slaves be brought from Africa, although slavery was still legal in the United States. Then there were also the rising tensions between the United States and Great Britain, which dominated the final years of Jefferson's second term, as the Royal Navy had been seizing American Britain. was Jefferson being the first president to send the military overseas into direct action, the war against the Barbary pirates. For decades prior to Jefferson's accession to office, the Barbary Coast pirates of North Africa had been capturing foreign merchant and warships, stealing their valuable cargoes and enslaving crew members, while often demanding huge ransoms for their release. Many of these ships and crews were American. Before independence, American merchant ships were protected from the Barbary pirates by the naval and diplomatic influence of Great Britain, which had threatened the use of military force should their ships be molested. However, that American protection came to an end after the colonies won their independence. The Barbary pirates also attacked the coastal northern Mediterranean, launching attacks against France, Italy, and Sicily, kidnapping women as white slaves, primarily and whenever possible, notable wealthy persons and ships for ransom. In their feverish... Who, who was they, uh, who was they kidnapping? I just want to know who they was kidnapping. 
let me, I'm, I'm going to rewind that a little bit. On their independence, the Barbary pirates also attacked the coastal northern Mediterranean, launching attacks against France, Italy, and Sicily, kidnapping women as white slaves, primarily and whenever possible, notable wealthy persons and ships for ransom. In their so who who is all these people that's warring? Who is the who who causing the wars? That that that's my question. Who in the hell is causing the wars? I think that's what it is. Hold on. Yeah. Who is causing the wars? That's what I want to know. Sound like it sounds like uh, that's men leading the charge. Not only is it men leading the charge, right? They taking people that look like them that's the opposite sex. They don't have no chill, right? So on top of the Salem witch trials, you also got this pirate shit going on where they capturing the white women as slaves. Right. Feverish search for white women slaves. A few pirates even went as far as the coast of Iceland, raiding inland to kidnap women and bring them back to North Africa. North African slave markets thrived as under Islamic law, known as Sharia, Although fellow Muslims could not be enslaved, non-Muslims could be and were. Over a period of more than 300 years, it is estimated that one million white Europeans, to include those captured at sea as well as through land raids abroad, were enslaved. Many of these were Americans captured at sea. In 1794, in reaction to the attacks, Congress had passed a law authorizing the payment of tribute to the Barbary states. Part of that law was the Naval Act of 1794, which authorized the construction of six frigates establishing the United States Navy. By the end of the 1700s, when Jefferson was Secretary of State, the United States had concluded treaties with all of the Barbary states, the Ottoman regencies of Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli, along with independent Morocco. When Congress authorized $80,000 for Morocco to not molest American shipping, it was considered a good deal, as it was a cost saving. Now. Are y'all familiar with, y'all hear this word he keep using. Now, ships are female, right? Because the water is also female, right? So the ships or the vessels in the water are typically named after women. It's female. And... This is the second time he didn't use this word molest. Molest the ships. Let's see what the word molest mean. Let's see what the word molest mean. Hmm. So the first definition is sexually assault or abuse a person, especially a child. Number two, which is dated, pester or harass someone in aggressive or persistent manner. What else they got? Mm. Them the only two definitions for molest. Harass. Right. Why would they use that word for ships, which are female? This all they do. I just want you to know this is all they do to the feminine, no matter what it is. Right. Compared to the loss of ships, cargo, and sailors, the Bay of Algiers, Mustafa Baba, also agreed, and many American merchantmen were escorted by Portuguese warships as Portugal also had a treaty with the Islamic States. But Jefferson was opposed to paying tribute, which he considered to be a modern Danegeld. 
when Saxon England paid the Danish Vikings not to attack. It did not work. Although Morocco and Algiers initially agreed, just weeks before Jefferson took office, Tripoli began attacking American merchant ships in an attempt to extract further tribute. Jefferson had seen enough. Jefferson tried diplomacy, and his letter to Pasha Yusuf Karamanli emphasized, our sincere desire to cultivate peace and commerce with your subjects. Pasha Karamanli, the ruler of modern-day Tunisia, felt that the Americans had insulted him by not offering to pay tribute. He threatened continued actions, if not so, respected. Pasha Karamanli was already at war with Sweden, having broken an existing treaty. After Sweden agreed to pay annual tribute and ransom for 131 captives, 14 Swedish merchantmen had been seized by Tripolitan Corsairs. Some of these were white women who were being transported on Swedish merchantmen. Some of them was who? Who? White women. White women. And here you are thinking that they got it easier, that they ain't had no history, and that the white woman's position in life right now ain't a result of her being brutalized and bullied first. As if it ain't a result of her being brutalized first. Like she's just voluntarily in this position. You think you, you think they done changed since then? You think they holier than thou? You think it's all peaches and cream and now? Huh? You really think that? It is not known if they were ever recovered, as the white women were rarely ransomed. They were highly prized and sold. The Pasha then declared war on the United States. On they was highly prized and sold. They was highly prized and sold for what? To be used by somebody. Now, these wars were started by men. He, 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 he. Right? As I keep telling you, as I keep telling you that this is a man-to-man -man war and women are resources and commodities in it because women are nature's resource. And you got nature's resource fighting against each other to see who could be used the most, to see who could be brutalized the most. Fourteen, eighteen oh one, by chopping down the flagpole at the American consulate in Tripoli, a direct act of war. Jefferson sent three frigates and a schooner under the command of U.S. Navy Commodore Richard Dale as a show of force and to protect U.S. ships entering the Mediterranean through the Straits of Gibraltar. Dale learned of the declaration when he reached Gibraltar on July 1st, 1801. From that point, Dale's ships blocked two of the Pasha's Corsairs operating as raiders and messengers inside the harbor. Yusuf Karimanli was shocked at the American audacity. The Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Selim III in Istanbul, was also less than amused, yet did not interfere when the Americans became involved. He had just concluded treaties with Russia and Austria and was trying to westernize his empire along western lines. This included eliminating the white slave trade, and this position was not favored by many of his subordinate regional leaders, especially in North Africa, and they launched a revolt against him and his cousin, and successor Mustafa IV had him murdered in 1807. He was not about to give up such a lucrative business. The U.S. blockades halted Barbary trade and raids with Europe, but did not stop Tripoli's trade with the other Barbary states. It did, however, incite the other rulers, who considered siding with the Pasha, and they expelled their American diplomats. The United States was putting a major dent into their pirate enterprises, to include the white slave trade. The possibility of Tunis, Algiers, and Morocco joining forces as a result of losing this lucrative business became a serious concern during 1802, but in 1803, Captain Edward Preble was the new American naval commander, and he was aware of the white slave trade and piracy, and he began to deal with it. On September 12, 1803, the USS Constitution arrived off the Barbary Coast to confront the Tripolitan pirates. In October 1803, the frigate USS Philadelphia ran aground and was attacked and seized, and the 307-man crew was held for ransom. 
In response, on February 16, 1804, a group under Navy Lieutenant Stephen Decatur slipped into Tripoli Harbor after dark, boarded and set fires that destroyed the Philadelphia. The Pasha, in response, demanded an outrageous sum in ransom for his American hostages, even threatening death if it was not paid. In 1804, Commodore Samuel Barron, aboard the USS President, took command of 11 vessels, and he had new orders. But due to illness, he handed command of the squadron to Captain John Rogers. Jefferson had again seen enough and decided to take direct and immediate action. He sent the order. Ex-Consul William Eaton, a former Army captain who used the title of General, and United States Marine Corps First Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon would lead a force of eight U.S. Marines and 500 mercenaries to take Derna and free any hostages. These mercenaries were Greeks from Crete, Arabs, and Berbers, opposed to the regime, and started on a march across the desert from Alexandria, Egypt in April 1805. Their objective was to capture the Tripolitan city of Derna. The Muslim troops were under the command of Egyptian Sheikh El Tahib, the Ottoman Empire Viceroy. William Eaton, who was overbearing and not very friendly, kept himself aloof from his men and was in overall command but leading only half the group. He had a tough job controlling the largely undisciplined mercenaries and the infighting between the Christian Greeks and Muslims, few of whom were professional soldiers, became a problem. His promises of money and loot once they took Derna was looked upon skeptically. However, O'Bannon and his eight Marines embedded with their mercenaries shared food, hardship, water, and earned their trust. O'Bannon decided to take the Muslims from Eton, exchanging them for his Greeks. The Marines built a strong fellowship by not denigrating the Islamic faith. They discussed their similarities and differences. O'Bannon also knew that many of these men had either been hostages themselves or had lost friends and family to the white slave trade. Eaton reported in May 1805, quote, our only provisions are a handful of rice and two biscuits a day, end quote. From March 22nd to March 30th, several Arab mercenaries under the command of Sheikh Hamid El Tahib staged mutinies. By April 8th, when he crossed the border into Libya and Tripoli, Eaton had quelled the Arab mutinies, but he could not stop the desertions. In late April, his army finally reached the port city of Bomba, some miles up the coast from Derna, where U.S. Navy warships USS Argus, Nautilus, and Hornet, with Commodore James Barron and Captain Isaac Hull, were waiting for him. Eaton received fresh supplies and the money to pay his mercenaries. Argus gave an additional cannon to the troops. On April 26, Captain Hull's ships then opened fire and bombarded Derna's batteries for an hour. Meanwhile, Eaton divided his remaining army into two separate attacking parties. The attack began at 14.45 hours, with Lieutenant O'Bannon and his Marines leading the attack with 50 inexperienced Greek gunners. Eaton's force was halted due to high volumes of enemy musket fire, but O'Bannon pushed his men through the inaccurate fire, as witnessed from the ships. Carefully interchanging his men into various ranks to fire, advance, reload, and continue the process, O'Bannon's force took the Fort Cannons. Eaton wounded in the left wrist would report later that O'Bannon, with his Marines, and Greeks had, quote, passed through a shower of musketry from the walls of houses, took possession of the battery, end quote. Eaton's forces caught up and turned the defenders' own abandoned guns against them, pushing them out of the city and into a well-placed ambush set up by O'Bannon just outside the main gate. During the entire battle, O'Bannon lost two men killed and three wounded Marines, with nine of his mercenaries killed. Eaton's losses among the Muslims is unknown. O'Bannon raised the flag over the captured city at 1,600 hours. They had just defeated a force four times their number who were in a fortified defensive posture. And for the first time in American history that a flag from the United States had been raised on foreign soil. Hostages were freed and the Navy sank the pirate ships in harbor. Accurate naval fire from Argus and the other ships forced them back and Derna remained in American hands. Yusuf reluctantly signed a peace treaty on June 10, 1805, aboard the USS Constitution. The treaty granted American ships passage through the Mediterranean without further payments of tribute and freedom from harassment. This also meant joining the other European nations in halting the very active and overt white slave trade. The war was over, and so was active white slavery from North Africa. Marine Corps legend has it that Hamet presented O'Bannon with a Mameluk sword, a sign of prestige and power. Emboldened by this event, more European nations also increased their naval presence and resisted the Barbary pirates, stopped paying tribute, 
crippling their commercial trade and extortion rackets, ending their raids on southern coastal Europe, ending hostage taking and their demand for ransoms and the white slave trade. Presley O'Bannon and his eight Marines had done the seemingly impossible, but it would not be the last time Marines were called upon to do the impossible and succeed. Simplify. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please. Yo, so the question is, where was this white slave trade taking place at? Where? Because it's a whole lot of misinformation out here about who did what while everybody wants to play innocent and victim, right? When you strip all this stuff away, the root of the issue where you always get back to is a male-female dynamic. Male-female dynamic. And we look at today as if today didn't end up here somehow. Women do not have privilege in this system. Women are commodities and all women have been bullied. So in Africa, them Negroes was buying white women. Right? How you going to claim to be the original as if all things were good coming at you? Right? You can't sell me on you being the original good and all we see is negativity coming at you now. Right? So the truth will set you free. And the problem is, is we've been living under a bunch of lies, a, lo a bunch of propaganda, right? Pushing stuff that keeps you divided and keeps you from fighting your real issue. Your real issue, right? So let me, let me pull up the research paper again. Right. That way y'all get to see it this time. Right. They want you to keep the man in the house. Men do all this stuff, right, in the world, and then they want to play like they ain't did nothing and blame everything on women when it's been them destroying the world the entire time. Childhood sexual abuse among black women and white women from two-parent families. But y'all think the nuclear family is what you should be pushing. That's propaganda. The nuclear family is propaganda. The nuclear family is unnatural. It was a creation for the United States Corporation. Right. It's not real. But let, let me tell you what is real is male violence, male greed, male domination and male control, male aggression, and male sexual recklessness. That's what's real. And then when you take the male out of the wild and you put them in the house, you end up with studies like this. Child sexual abuse among black women and white women from two parent families. Annotation, 
This study examined racial differences in child sexual abuse, CSA, among African-American women and white women who had lived in two parent families. The child sexual abuse CSA prevalence rate in this study was 27.9%. Initial analysis showed that African-American women were 1.75 times more likely than white women to have experienced CSA. Having a stepfather or working mother did not increase the prevalence of CSA. Having a stepfather, right, or a working mother did not increase <laughs> the rate or the prevalence of CSA. So if, if, a, if a working mother and a stepfather, which would be two variables that you would think would increase child sexual assault because, well, since he ain't the daddy, he has more reason to do it. And since the daddy, since the mama's at work, it would happen more. Nope. Those two variables didn't increase the rate, which tells you what the male is the male, whether he's the father or not. Interesting. <laughs> Whether the mother was at home or not, it was still taking place. There were no significant racial differences found in the nature. There were no significant racial differences found in the nature, severity, or aftermath of CSA. So you've been sold some cockamamie bullshit about you and white folks being so different or white folks and black folks being so different. Both of y'all ass was enslaved. Both of y'all was being raped and sold by men. And both of y'all have been bullied <laughs> under patriarchy, right? Interesting. But they sold you on protecting your race. This is how you became a pick me because you were sold on race and you thought you and the black man had to stick together because you felt that the white man and the white woman were sticking together. So you chose race over sex, which both of y'all was suffering under sex and not so much as race when it's all, when, when you, when you strip everything away. Well, <laughs> Right. Some differences of potential importance included one white women were two point five times more likely than African-American women to experience CSA before age seven. This is a, I want you all to understand this is in a two parent household. Right. Let's push the nuclear family. You ain't got no man in the house. <laughs> You ain't nothing because you ain't got no man in the house. Why the men trying to bully you about keeping their ass in the house? Because they scared of being outside. Right? Like, like old boy trying to miss Lee when she was going to put them out the house. Old dude talking about miss Lee, but miss Lee, you going to let my baby mama stay out here. But what about me? They be robbing outside. Nigga, get outside. That where you belong. That's where you belong, right? You like to fight. You like to rob. You like to kill. You like to steal. You like to get into degenerate stuff. All your aggression need to be outside. Why are you trying to bully somebody to bring you in the house? Right? Hmm? Right? Bring them in the house, huh? White women were 2.5 times more likely than African-American women to experience CSA before age seven. Number two, African-American women were more likely to report the occurrence of CSA during adolescence. Number three, no race differences were found in the rate of incest. You know how. You know how black folks like to say, <laughs> you know, you know how black folks like to say 
white folks are the inbreeders, right? They like to put it off on race as if they not as if they're not doing what white what they point the finger at white folks doing. For some reason, black folks really think they better in some areas when in actuality, they're not. They're not. African, there was no race differences found in the rate of incest. Inbreeding. Inbreed, right? Right? But... African American women were more likely to report increased incidents of perpetrators living in the same household. What? They want you to bring the predator in the house, though, and try to bully you and say you ain't got no man in the house. Girl, it's of benefit to you to not have no man in your house. They bullied you. To accept the predator and keep the predator in the house, you know, because what goes on in the house stay in the house, right? And the mammosphere, the mammosphere is responsible for this. It's the mammosphere that helps further these acts, right? Because they need male validation so bad, right? That they're willing to sacrifice their children to keep a predator in the house who don't supposed to be in the house, right? Right? So no race differences were found in the rate of incest, but African-American women were more likely to report increased incidents of perpetrators living in the same house. Four, African-American women were more likely to report more than one perpetrator. You know, black males are so comfortable that they, they all take turns fucking with the kids in the house. Right? right? One after another one. And then nobody does anything particularly the mammies don't do nothing right they just let it happen right <clears throat> number five white women were rated oh white women rated the effect of CSA similarly to African American women at the time it occurred. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that black and white women report the same effects of CSA at the moment that occurred, that it occurred? Wow. Keep in mind, white women are 2.5 times more likely to experience CSA before the age of seven. But y'all sitting up here romanticizing <laughs> white folks' households. You romanticizing white folks' households because women don't realize that the nature of a female is resource dependency, not male dependency. So... Because white males control the resources, they have a harder control over women, over the white woman. They got they they got they got more rope around her neck because they control more resources. Women are resource dependent, not male dependent. And on top of them controlling all the resources, manipulating white women's um, nature, as you see the history of white women being bullied through um, the Salem witch trials and the white slave trade, and the males clearly taking over all the resources, 
And now they have all the power. White women have been put also in survival mode. (laughs) And because white women have been put in survival mode, it explains the second half of this sentence. That explains the second half of this sentence. White women rated the effect of child sexual assault similarly to African-American women at the time it occurred, but as having a worse impact on their lives overall. Why does child sexual assault have a worse impact on their lives overall? Because white women are at the higher end of the socioeconomic totem pole. So she does not have the racial pressures on her and all of the social barriers on her. So she's not as strong as the black woman. And in addition to her not being as mentally strong as the black woman due to her position on the socioeconomic totem pole, she's also not able to express herself because of the power structure that she's living with in the household. So white women typically keep all of this shit bottled up. And they can't express themselves because if you go back to number two, African-American women were more likely to report the occurrence of child sexual assault in adolescence. White women were less likely to report the shit. So black women have a voice that white women don't have. And so at least she get to speak up and she get the privilege of everybody assuming that black men ain't shit. Everybody assume on site that black males are super predators. The white woman does not get to benefit from the default belief of the white male being a super predator. So she has to bottle all this shit up because she's under a lot of motherfucking power, right? And since she under all this power and they've pushed the illusion of race and white supremacy, nobody believes, nobody, not white folks and not black folks, nobody believes that Ted is doing this shit to her. So everybody shut her up. That could be the reason why white women report a worse impact on their lives overall. Differences in family structure remained important even among the two parent families. Two parent families are bullshit because your support system is cut off. So who going to protect you from the predator in the house? You're isolated in a nuclear family structure. Women need community. Women need community. Differences in family structure remained important even among the two parent families. Researchers have long been interested in racial differences in the characteristics and prevalence of child sexual assault. Even though African American and white women have been compared, many questions remain. The study addressed one of these questions. It was interested in racial differences in child sexual assault among African-American women and white women who had lived in two parent families with either biological or step parents for most of their childhood. So it didn't even matter if the if it was the biological father or a stepfather. The rape was the same. So 
So who do you trust? Who do you trust? Why we still listening? Why we still listening to, to the mammy sphere and the manosphere? Why do you care about the male ego? Huh? Why you care about the male ego? Hmm? Racism, all isms, all isms of today, capitalism, communism, racism, fascism, all of these isms, including feminism, all of these isms come out the mind of the male because all of these are philosophies. Race-ism is a philosophy because the nature of the male is divide and conquer. And they push the illusion of race to cover up the real issue, which is sexual conflict. And they got you to uphold male philosophies against your own, against your own survival as a woman. Because while you're upholding the male philosophies, you're still being brutalized. Hence why during the Black Power Movement, the Black Panther Party, women were being raped by black men in that movement. So when they say we always been to get, been better together, who is we? Who is we? The question is, are y'all ready to let go of the lie, all of you? Are you ready to let go of the lie, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, right? Latina? Are you ready to let go of the lie? Are you, are you ready to play the woman game and stop playing the man game? Hmm? You ready to stop playing the... <laughs> I really want to wear my headsets, but I don't like the way the... the the, the sound is feeding back in my ears. I got to figure out what's wrong with it. Might have something to do with this damn mixer falling on the ground the other day. I figured out though. So, <clears throat> Bonobo, the forgotten ape. Remember I had Franz the Wall <clears throat> on my show? Franz DeWall, this book was co-authored by him and Franz Lynn. Bonobo primates are of the same family as the chimpanzee. The difference between the chimpanzee and the bonobo is environment, really, just environment, and maybe size. The Bonobo is a little smaller in size than the chimpanzee. The bonobo primate is matriarchal. The chimpanzee is patriarchal. So I'm going to turn and find something in here to read to you.
bonobos and chimpanzees share about n- between 96 and 98 percent of their genome with humans. And Let's see. I'm just going to read different parts of this, right? If I run across something that's uh, important, well, not necessarily important, but that catches my eye, I'll read it. Because everything in the book is very interesting. Mama, you having, you, you having a blast, and I don't want to, uh, hey! Amaya, turn it down some. So, if I read, if I run across something that catches my eye, because everything in this book is good and very valuable, and I'm pretty sure any page that I turn to is going to back up my point tonight because at the end of the day, this is all about social structure. And we have been playing the chimpanzee game for too long. And it's time to play the bonobo game. As women, it's time to play the bonobo game. So who's the boss? Who's the boss? Students of animal behavior are accustomed to ranking individuals from high to low scale, low on a scale of dominance. This is easy to do with male chimpanzees and baboons, as well as with females of many old world monkeys, such as macaques and vervet monkeys. Social rankings were discovered in the 1920s in domestic fowl based on the direction of attacks among hens, hence the term pecking order. Apart from dominance reflected in the outcome of conflict, many animals possess status displays. These displays function a bit like the stripes on a military uniform. They signal an individual's rank. In chimpanzees, for example, the dominant males, the the dominant makes himself look large by raising his hair and standing upright. Whereas the subordinate literally grovels in the dust, uttering panting, uh, panting grunts. That bonobos lack such formalized rituals of dominance and submission tells us already how relatively unimportant status must be in their society. Let's 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 go back for a second. That bonobos lack such formalized rituals of dominance and submission tells us already how relatively unimportant status must be in their society. We're going to have to stop playing the male game. We're going to have to stop playing the chimpanzee game. This is particularly, this is particularly true of relations among adult females. If you are playing the male game, the chimpanzee game, as a woman, you have not matriculated into womanhood. You still are a child in the mind if you can't get along with other women and if you feel like you got to be dominant. Because at the end of the day, You're having ego issues. You got self-esteem and self-worth issues if that's the game you're playing. So this this is particularly true of relations among adult females. 
Status is not wholly absent, but it is so vague that Kano does not wish to speak of high ranking females, only of influential ones. So it ain't about rank. It's about being of influence. And if you are of influence, right, of positive influence, that is beneficial for the whole, the group. Because it ain't about being dominant and it ain't about high ranking. And I want to show you through, through my example, right, of how to reduce conflict and how to be influential without being domineering, not being dominating, not being ego driven, right? This is because you got to walk it like you talk it. You got to be the change that you want to see. I'm starting with the girl in the mirror. I'm asking her to change her ways. Right? We can't keep rolling like we've been rolling when it's evidence all around you of what's the proper way to do stuff. 96 to 98% sharing our genome. It's some real interesting stuff that I want to share with you, though, in here. He claims that females are respected out of affection. He claims that females are respected out of affection, not because their rank is high. Affection over rank. Aggression does occur among females. One female may without warning jump on top of another, bite her and steal her sugar cane. It has even been suggested that female to female fights are the worst possible fights in bonobo society, right? Which also may explain some of these quote unquote lesbian relationships where they're more violent. Why? Because it's equal playing field, right? And don't nobody bat an eye, a little cat fight, right? Nobody said that conflict didn't exist. However, you got to know how to resolve conflict. It's all about the re resolution of conflict. Right. Yet, yet, even though that female female fights are worst possible fights in bonomo society yet they constitute such a minuscule proportion they constitute such a minuscule proportion small of aggressive disputes that for all intents and purposes females can be said to be remarkably tolerant Females can be said to be remarkably tolerant. If there is a female, if there is a female rank order, it is largely based on seniority rather than physical intimidation. Older females are generally of higher status than younger ones. This idea that getting older reduces your value is total BS that only exists in a patriarchal mind where the male wants to use up your life force energy until you have none. Once they feel like you have no more life force energy, then they discard you, which is the reason why males want younger females because men use women as mirrors to themselves. 
So if he gets an older woman, that older woman reflects back to him old, which which hurts his ego, right? Because he fears extinction. So he needs something young to make him feel young on the inside. So it's all about sucking the life force energy out of her. That is not how it works in a matriarchal setup. Older women or older females are high ranking due to seniority, right? And males just copied women by making the older male high ranking. They literally just flipped, they just flipped the damn script. That's it. They put the male in the woman's position and the woman in the male's position. But I'm turning the tables. I'm turning the tables back to the way they were supposed to be turned. Right. And that's why you have a lot of young women. Right. Coming over here. Right. Because the young are realizing the young women that come over here, they are realizing that wisdom outranks everything. And you cannot you cannot be wise without experience. You cannot be knowledgeable without experience. And so the, the young ladies that come over here, they understand their place as young women and they become students as it should be. As it should be. Conversely, the low status females are recent immigrants from other communities. Low ranking females are recent immigrants from other communities. So this idea of racism and difference in communities only exists in patriarchy from the male because the female don't turn away others from another community, right? Right? The young, these young females keep a low profile, avoid getting involved in fights, and seldom draw attention to themselves. Upon transferring to their new group, they single out one particular resident female for special attention. They try to groom her and invite her to sexual contact. I'm, a, I'm going to reread that. Upon transferring to the new group, the, the, the new females, right? Upon transferring to the new group, they single out one particular resident female for special attention. They try to groom her and invite her to sexual contact. According to Janichi Idani, who studied this process, close friendships are established if the resident reciprocates. This contact helps the migrant become accepted into close-knit female community. No, that's not penis juice. That's female to female contact. That's female to female contact, not penis juice. Because in bonobo society, there are males in bonobo society, but the females prefer mating with each other. They prefer mating with each other over the male. 96 to 98% sharing the human genome. So what's behind that? I don't know. Why don't we continue to read? What does it say? Because 
what do you see in what do you see out there you see the fear of the creation of a so-called lesbian cult why is that such a fear among human males the answer may be right here in bonobo society the answer may be right here in bonobo society after having produced her first offspring the young female's position becomes more stable and central until when she grows older and climbs in status the cycle is repeated with young female immigrants now seeking a good relationship with her among males the situation is entirely different as far as we know males do not move between groups and dominance seems to matter a great deal to them see I told you that there is a separation. There should be a separation between males and females and how they operate. And the number of males to female ratio, the male to female ratio and how it need to be set up. Right. Oh, this is going to get interesting. This is going to get real interesting in how the bonobo females reduce conflict and control the male. Reduce conflict and control the male. Remember, the bonobo society is a matriarchal society, which is the more peaceful of the primates. Which is the more peaceful of the primates. A stark difference between chimpanzee run and there's there's a key element that makes a big difference between the two a very big key element Among males, the situation is entirely different. As far as we know, males do not move between groups and dominance seems to matter a great deal to them. There is much more fighting among males than among females. There is much more fighting among males than among females. Whereas rank positions near the top, specifically the position of alpha male, tend to be quite clear, mid-ranking and lower positions are not so well defined. Since bonobos do not show elaborate status rituals, the rank order is mostly expressed in, direction, in, in, expressed in the direction of aggressive chases. These encounters which rarely escalate, often end in a quick conciliatory contact in which two males mount each other or rub their scrotums together, standing back to back. Y'all heard that? The lions do something similar too, where they mount each other as well. Remember my, remember the episode that I had, hold on, let me see, let me see, um, I want to pull this up, let's see, Okay, let me let me let me just pull pull up a little video real quick of the lions, right? Let's let's pull up the lions, right?
Every now and then it invades my mind. Some have lost their way through hard times. From the nine to five, just the world they see. So get your boogie shoes, it's a remedy. I insist that you get down and let a party. I'm letting y'all know let them batty boys be batty boys right cause being a batty boy is in their nature they've been hiding it right there you go just lay down be submissive go on be submissive Simba Simba Show me you submissive, Simba. One more time. Get on down. Mm -hmm. Simba and Scar. That what they do. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, baby. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the damn messenger. I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. <laughs> So, so, so what, what the, how, how they, how they figure out, how the male figure out, that crazy, ain't it? Look in the camera, girl. <laughs> You can't see? Open your eyes. Then open your eyes, mama. <laughs> Give me a hug. Look, look no, we already having the tr we already having troubles with this microphone. I gotta figure out what's wrong with it. I got I gotta do some troubleshooting on this thing. All right. Close the door. Thank you. Gosh, I don't like the way this shit sounds. Anyway, y'all just saw the lions, okay? That what they did. Now what the what the monkey do? What does the male what does the male monkey do or bonobo monkey? What he do? I'm gonna read it one more time. The encounters, which rarely escalate, often end in a quick conciliatory contact in which two males mount each other or rub their scrotums together, standing back to back. Doing the button. Uh huh. Mounting may occur several times. Not just one time, two time or three time, several times doing the but mm -mm -mm. yeah. With male with the males changing positions and rump contact is mutual by definition. It's mutual. They they ain't fighting each other, they just like come on, baby, let's get down. And they both agree it's mutual, right? So that these contacts carry a message of symmetry rather than inequality. The level of tension is quite a bit lower than that among male chimpanzees who also re reconcile, uh, reconcile after fights. But usually after some delay and with gestures and signals that underline the hierarchy. The greatest contrast, however, is in the factors that determine a male's rank. 
See, males need to be ranking themselves. And women need to be not ranking. We need to be working together. That fighting and ranking shit is between the male. Right? In chimpanzee, the key is alliance formation among males. A challenger will try to recruit other males to help him overthrow the established leader. And if successful, the new alpha has an obligation towards his allies. So if they help him overthrow some, he he's in debt to them. He in debt to the people, to the other males that have helped him overthrow a male, right? For example, he will allow his allies, but not his rivals, to mate with sexually receptive females, right? He will allow his, he will allow his allies, but not his rivals, to mate with success, success, sexually uh, receptive females. Oh, so they won't try to pass them around. They won't try to pass them around, right? That's what they won't try to do, right? Such deal making has been suggested for wild chimpanzees. This is, this is, I want y'all to understand, this is what they do in the chimpanzee society. Y'all, y'all understand? Y'all hear this? This is what they do in chimpanzee society. This is what they do in human society. So this paragraph we're reading is about how chimpanzees operate. Once they overtake a male, they basically let these let their allies run the trains or whatever on the women. Which community do you want to live in so far? Because this, this is what chimpanzees do. So in chimpanzees, the key is alliance formation among males. A challenger will try to recruit other males to help him overthrow the established leader. And if successful, the new alpha male has an obligation towards his allies. For example, he will allow his allies, but not his rivals, to mate with sexually receptive females. Such deal making has been suggested for wild chimpanzees. And I documented it in detail myself in the large colony of the Arnhem Zoo in the Netherlands. The social maneuvering among the Arnhem males was so complex and strategic that I doubt that I dubbed it chimpanzee politics. If there's if there's such a thing as bonobo politics, it more than likely revolves around uh, evolves as much around females as around males. According to Kano, male fights are usually one sided and over quickly. Whereas female fights, although rare, may create great confusion since other females are drawn into the fray. It is possible, though, that the confusion is mostly in the eyes of the human observer. The animal actors themselves may be anything but confused. If one were to analyze what happens at such moments carefully, for example, with the aid of video, one might uncover an intricate network of alliances. I suspect that female bonobos establish an order among themselves that requires little reinforcement and hence becomes visibly, visible only at times of crisis. One such critical moment occurs when adult males change position. We have two reports of rank challenges between male bonobos at Wamba. In both cases, female, females were the deciding factor. The son of a powerful female 
Aki had begun to enter adulthood. This male named Koguma one day challenged the second ranking male, Ude. Dragging a branch and screaming, Koguma charged straight at Ude. Rushing narrowly past him, Ude leapt up and slapped Koguma in defense. The alpha male then intervened by mounting Ude, calming him down with rump-to-rump contact. Come here, baby. Come here. Chill out. Doing the butt. That, that, that how he stopped it. The male came over there. The alpha male came over there and initiated doing the butt to calm the, to calm the aggressive monkey down. Right? After a while, Kaguma charged again because Ude counteracted. The two males ended up flying about between shrubs and bushes, exchanging violent blows. This violence is they, listen to me. Violence is they thing in all of these doggone species, right? Including the male. So when you go back and you look at what they did in all these slave trades, it has been the male. We've been, in, we've been living in a delusional ass human chimpanzee society for too damn long, right? They need to just they need to just screw each other and chill out because clearly screwing each other work in the chimpanzee society. And y'all two y'all two against it here because that was clearly that what they need to be doing. Right. Since we want since we want to act like chimpanzees, we need to act like chimpanzees all the way. Right. When Kaguma launched another attack, his mother, with an infant clasped to her belly, came to assist him. Mammosphere. The, 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 the mammosphere? When Kaguma launched another attack, his mother... With an infant clasped to her belly, came to assist him. Ude fled as Aki, with the loud calls of other females behind her, chased him off. Kaguma did not let up. He attacked Ude 12 times in the span of nine minutes. Every time Ude rose to retaliate, Aki would go after him. Towards the end, Uday became silent and avoided Kaguma. Eventually, he fled to the nearest tree where Kaguma branch dragged in his <laughs> direction. After that, Uday seemed unsettled. If Kaguma charged, he would flee or present his behind in an attempt to pacify the younger male. Right? Here's the other conflict, right? The oldest and highest ranking female came, had three sons, had three sons, the oldest of whom named Ebo was the alpha male. The beta female son named Ten began to challenge Kame's son, although he was usually defeated by Ebo. During this period, Kame was weakened by old age and did not intervene her son's affairs anymore. Right? They need why they need the mama to come in to, to intervene in their shit. Why do they need the mama to come in and intervene in their shit? Now this, this, this is this this bonobo, this bonobo society though. This, this right here bonobo society. The mother of the challenger, in contrast, was in good health and began to attack Kame's sons. Yeah, they, they primates. Yeah, they, 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 they primates. That, that, that's who they are. And the mama 
always got to come in and save the goddamn day, right? She got to intervene in her son's conflicts, right? And when the males kill, chill their own conflict, they do the butt, right? Right? So the mother of the challenger, in contrast, was in good health and began to attack Kame's son. Once she even even defeated Ebo himself in a serious in a serious physical battle. She she ended up fighting one of the damn dudes. She ended up fighting one of the damn dude monkeys and won. <laughs> the most critical confrontation took place not between the males but between their mothers. Two mamas, listen, two mamas fighting over a trash ass sons. Two mamas fighting each other over their goddamn sons. Avoid boy moms, ladies. Avoid boy moms. I'm sorry if I got some boy moms in here listening to me, but that's how y'all be acting. Right. Y'all be acting like this shit. Right. What, what, what? Let me see. So this was a post made by a woman. And they shared it in my high power podcast group on Facebook. This what she say. Did what she say. Did what I say. Stay, stay away from boy moms. The motherfuckers is crazy. Look. I swear, I'm I'm keeping a mental note of all the bitches I hate. I tell you, I'm keeping a mental note of all the bitches I hate. So when my son is a man and your daughter is grown, I can send him to do his mama's devilish work. Bitch, I'm kicking ass and taking names. You just wait, bitch, because I ain't never going to forget. Your little daughter is three years old now. Bitch, I'm holding a grudge for the next 16 years. Because when my son get older and I see your daughter then turn 18, bitch, let me tell you something. I'm going to send my daughter, my son after you because I'm going to get revenge, bitch. Stay away from boy moms, goddammit. Because even in the monkey community, the motherfucker's crazy. They they ass crazy in the monkey community too, okay? So the most critical confrontation took place not between the males, but between their mothers. The two females had a hand-to-hand fight in which in which they rolled over the ground and in which Kame was held down. Thereafter, such fights occurred repeatedly, but Kame never regained dominance. The mamas fighting for their damn sons. It's always a male in the middle of conflict. Leave it, leave it up to a male to be the reason why women be fighting. Whether it be the mamas fighting over their damn sons or the chick fighting over some damn penis. Leave it to the damn male to be the center of the goddamn conflict. Not only did the beta female rise to the alpha spot, her son did her son did so too. <laughs> Telling you, damn boy, mom, crazy. Ebo became submissive following his mother's defeat. The sons of Kame remained middle ranking for a couple of years, but became quite peripheral after their mother's death. They sure do, don't they? Had Kame's son been chimpanzees, 
Had Kame's sons been chimpanzees, they would no doubt have banded together to defeat their, pos their positions collectively. In bonobos, however, male alliances are little developed. Male alliances are little developed, which is a good thing. That's what you need, right? Which allows females, listen to me, in bonobos, however, male alliances are little developed, which allows females to exert much greater influence. As a result, a relatively young adult male can reach a top position provided his mother is of high rank. So in a matriarchal setup, the way the male rises in rank is based on the seniority or the influence of the mother. So you get, you better be careful with boy moms who may be attached too much to their sons, right? Because she could be, because she had that Y chromosome of DNA on her, her brain, she could be working in the interest of her son as opposed to the group. And I'm talking about in terms of humans now. As a result, a relatively young adult male can reach a top position provided his mother is of high rank. On the other hand, Males whose mothers are over the hill or dead tend to drop in rank. They depend on their moms, right? The male's rank depends on his mother. Right? Yep. Yep. We not. That's why I'm saying. I'm not allowing no boy moms into my community because they will be a problem. They'll be a problem, right? And I'm talking about my physical community, right? You can't, you can't, I'm not letting you live amongst us because you will be a problem. And it's because of that Y chromosomal DNA and she'll work in the best interest of her son as opposed to the community because it'll start, it'll become a power struggle, not on her, for herself, but for her son. Because we already know that they're handicapped and they can't do shit on their own. So now the woman's, the woman's motivation, the woman's motivation is to throw everybody away to put her son in position. I ain't finna tolerate that bullshit. This brings us perhaps to the most puzzling aspect of bonobo society. Females often dominate males. With a few notable exceptions, such as spotted hyenas and the lemurs of Madagascar. Amaya! Damn! <laughs> this brings us to perhaps the most puzzling aspect of bonobo society. Females often dominate males, with a few notable exceptions, such as spotted hyenas and the lemurs of Madagascar. Male dominance is the standard mammalian pattern. The reason is not hard to guess. 
Males usually outweigh females and possess weapons through violence and aggression, right? Males usually outweigh females and possess weapons such as horns, tusks, or fangs that are absent or much reduced in females. Because bonobos show the same kind of sexual dimorphism, albeit somewhat less pronounced than in many other primates, dominance by the weaker sex constitutes a huge violation of every biologist's expectations. Amaya! Chill! The first time I noticed female dominance, I considered it an oddity. But the more captive colonies I studied, visited, or heard about, the more the pattern emerged as the norm rather than the exception, right? So the more they actually studied nature, what they thought was the exception to the rule is actually the norm of female dominance. So, I'll read that again. Because bonobos share, show the same kind of sexual dimorphism, albeit somewhat, somewhat less pronounced than in many other primates, dominance by the so-called weaker sex constitutes a huge violation of every biologist's expectations. The first time I noticed female dominance, I considered it an oddity. But the more captive colonies I studied, visited, or heard about, the more the pattern emerged as the norm rather than the exception. Could it be that the cultural sensitivities surrounding the relation between men and women in our societies led to a period of denial of this unique arrangement in one of our closest relatives. The situation remained unclarified until 1992, when the silence ended with a bang at an international meeting of primatologists in uh, Strasbourg, France. Several students of captive bonobos reported observations and experiments that left little doubt about the issue. Amy Parrish, Amy Parrish induced food competition in identical groups, one adult male, two adult females, of chimpanzees and bonobos at Stuttgart Zoo. Honey was provided in a place from which the apes could collect it by dipping sticks into a small hole. The male chimpanzee would make a charging display through the enclosure and claim everything for himself. What did I tell you about males? Males are selfish, greedy, and resource hoarders. Selfish, greedy, and resource hoarders. So... They took one male, one adult male, and two adult females, right? The male chimpanzee would make a charging display through the enclosure and claim everything for himself. Only when he was satisfied would he let females fish for honey. Only when he was satisfied would he let f females fish for honey. In the bonobo group, on the other hand, the females would approach the honey mound together. Together. 
and engage in mutual sexual contact. Rewind. They do what? What they do? In the bonobo group, on the other hand, the females would approach the honey mound together and engage in mutual sexual contact. After this, they would feed side by side, taking turns with virtually no competition. The male could make as many charging displays as he wanted. The females would be unimpressed. The male could make as many charging attempts as he wanted. The females would be unimpressed. Similarly, observers at the Belgian Animal Park of Plackendale um, reported that if a male tried to harass a female, all the females would band together to chase him off. I told you, I told you that women need each other and that they need to be in community together. The reason that the male is so, quote unquote, afraid of a, quote unquote, lesbian cult, that's why they try to, because them motherfuckers know how powerful a bond is between women where there is no conflict between the women, but collectivism. The male is afraid of a group of women, not only in human society, but also in bonobo society. And when there is no conflict between the women and there is a band, you can protect yourselves. They have purposely they have purposely broken up women and made women seek quote unquote protection from their natural predator and they intentionally broke the bonds between you and other women You have been operating under chimpanzee politics where the male is violent, aggressive, greedy, right? Hoarding. And where females in the bonobo society share amongst each other, right? And they reduce conflict. But you'd have been pimped out of, you'd have been pimped out of and talked out of observing nature, right? And doing what nature show you should, you should be doing, right? Come on. What else it say? That's why you getting your ass ran through the motherfucking ringer because you're disconnected as women. You don't trust each other. I just need to I need to stop putting my books any and every goddamn way. I just I really need to just stop throwing this shit everywhere. time to read that part of the book perfect time but I don't know where the hell I put it it's probably still on my counter in there could have swore I put them damn books back in here maybe I didn't 
Oh, well. It was a perfect time to, to read that particular portion of the book. Whatever. Anyway. Similar, similarly, observers at the Belgian Animal Park of Placken Deal reported that if a male tried to harass a female, all the females would band together to chase him off. That such behavior is not restricted to captivity and evident from ob observations at Wamba. According to Kano, males sometimes provoke counterattacks from a mass of females. A group of males will not attack a female, but the opposite can occur. At the center of a traveling party, one usually finds high-ranking females close together. Their sons are allowed to enter this aggregation. But adult males without mothers tend to stay at the periphery. The picture emerging from Wamba, from Wamba then is one of a female-centered society. Female-centered society. But we can't have a female-centered society with women worshiping penis juice. That my book. Here's my book. It's over here. We can't have. We can't have a female-centered society because we got a bunch of mammosphere members who worship penis juice and do not like or trust other women, right? So I always must go back here, right? In chimpanzee society, they act like the pimp, right? What'd that say? I'm going to put it up. I know you probably can't. It's probably blurred, blurred a little bit, but you can't see it. It say play one hole against the next. Play one hole against the next. That, that what they do in chimpanzee society. Right. Play one hole against the next. The ism. A good pimp will always use his hoes to cross one another. This is not hard to do. Every hoes ambition is to be the bottom bitch. The mammosphere, any, any, any chick from the manosphere is one that wants to be the bottom bitch. And typically they want to be a bottom bitch to a dusty, to a dusty. Hey. They ain't even a bottom bitch to a motherfucker that, that's even worth anything. But every hoe's ambition is to be the bottom bitch. She will lie, steal another hoe's money, and even set a trap for a hoe to get caught by the police to take her spot. She will do anything to be favored by one. The mammosphere will do anything to be favored by Dusty. So it's to a pimp's advantage to play one hole against the next. Competition breeds excellence. If you can get your workers going at one another, each trying to outdo the others, we don't operate like that in bonobo society. We don't operate like that in bonobo society, but you do operate like that in chimpanzee society. So if you can get your workers going at one another, each trying to outdo the other, you will always win because that's the game for men to win. Men want to win. And then they use the dumbass mammosphere minions to play this game. You don't want them to be friends. You don't want them to be friends. You want them to distrust 
and dislike one another so that you end up controlling them all. That's the name of the game for males, right? And they don't like the fact that I'm letting you know that's their motherfucking game. Now, they can sit up here and write all this shit and say that, and not say that they preaching female hate. But if I write a book called The Game 41 Shades of Men, I'm the one preaching hate, right? I'm the one preaching hate, right? I'm preaching male hate. That's what they say everywhere, right? I don't know if y'all was in that that um that room, that clubhouse room. I I randomly sometimes just pop up in in people clubhouse room. I don't even be on clubhouse. But provided somebody sends me a room and at the time if I'm not doing nothing or whatever and if I feel like popping in there, I might just pop in. And this is the second time, well, I done popped in on somebody's shit, right? And then I always say what I say and then I just vanish. And when I leave, the motherfucker be mad as hell. They be mad when I be talking, right? Because they, they want to be able to do this without no motherfucking pushback, right? And they mad because... <laughs> they mad because I hit you with the motherfucking signs on how you can flip the motherfucking power back into your hands. Right? Right? We ain't going to be able to do this with a bunch of with women that's, that, that's, got, that's got a belly full of nut milk. Listen, stop, stop thinking that you're going to do this with, a, with, with, with chicks with a belly full of nut milk. The bitch got to be she got to be, you know, debugged. She got to, they got to pump her stomach. We didn't take her ass to the, to, the, to the emergency room and have them pump her motherfucking stomach, right? And when she started leaking white shit out of her ears and her eyes and her mouth, and when she stopped doing it, let's make sure that she don't get no more in there. And after she detox, then we reevaluate her ass, okay? That's that how it go, right? But let the bitch get a stomach pump first. Right? Anyway. The picture emerging from Wamba then is one of a female center society in which even the male rank order is largely dictated by mothers. Even the male rank order is largely dictated by mothers. At the meeting in Strasbourg, Ferrucci. Um, further discovered what looks very much like female dominance in relation to food. Males usually appeared at the feeding site first, but they surrendered preferred positions when the females appeared. It seemed that males appeared first not because they were dominant, but because they had to feed before the arrival of females, even middle and low ranking females could displace males. Even middle and low ranking females could displace males. Since females rarely resort to aggression, since females rarely resort to aggression, the best evidence for their high status is the way they control highly prized foods. Harmon and Fruth documented food sharing among bonobos at Lamaco, which occasionally resolved around meat, but more commonly around large an anidium and triculia fruits. The possessor of the food was almost always an adult female. Bystanders surrounded her, some begging by stretching out hand, stretching out a hand or touching her mouth. 
males would display in the vicinity by breaking off branches and charging about, or they would hang around at the edges of feeding clusters. They would be nice to the young, all of whom had free access to the food. Not permitted to enter the clusters themselves, the males could do little aside from steal scraps from infants. Boy, they got them damn males under control. They got them males under control in bonobo society, which is how it should be, by the way. Even if a male was the first possessor, he often lost the food to one of the older females. Perhaps as a result, males lacked the confidence to share themselves and held on tightly to whatever they had managed to get their hands on. The image of female controlled food distribution with waiting and uh, paras parasitizing males at the margin is dramatically different from the typical feeding clusters of chimpanzees in which an adult male holds an animal carcass mm -hmm. what happened to the rest of the okay so this they, they messed that one up right there Carcass, while females sometimes dominate adult males. Hmm. Let me see. It seems like this sentence don't finish. Yeah, this is, uh, I think we're missing a page here. Continued on page 82. That's crazy. Why would they do that? That's crazy. Okay. All right. So in which an adult male holds an animal carcass while others beg for a portion. Chimpanzee possessors share both with their fellow hunters, usually other males. Y y you hear this? This is what they do in chimpanzee society. Right. Anyway, males at the margin is dra dramatically different from the typical feeding clusters of chimpanzees in which an adult male holds an animal carcass while others beg for a portion. Chimpanzee possessors share both with their fellow hunters, usually other males and with females. Their tolerance is remarkable as well as understandable for two reasons. Sharing with other males serves to cement political ties. Sharing with other males serves to cement political ties and to reinforce hunting cooperation. Why should other males assist in the strenuous capture of a monkey if not for a piece of meat at the end, apart from the reciprocity among male hunters, offering food to females may work out as a paternal investment. So basically, like I told you before, males want to hoard resources so that they can control and manipulate the females. This is why this is why you cannot reason with human males. She say, but can we really compare human mechanisms to bonobos? Though we share 98% DNA, that concept can be misleading as these traits manifest differently. Well, sweetheart, chimpanzees also share the same thing. And guess what? Humans mimic chimpanzee behavior to the T. So, uh, yes, you can. 
The problem is, is you're unaware that y'all are acting like chimpanzees. Right? The problem is women and humans, y'all really think that you're so different and that you're disconnected from other animals. You are an animal yourself. Your base nature is mammalian. You are a mammal. And your closest relative is a primate, which y'all act just like, except you're acting like chimpanzees. To the T. To the T. This idea that you want to separate yourself from other life forms because we feel superior or as if we're more elevated is the reason why we are fucked up now. This idea that we are so separate and just unlike everything else is the reason that humans are the worst animal on the planet and has destroyed the planet because we really think we some shit that we not. Yes. You can compare because you're literally living just like them. You just living like the wrong primate. You should be modeling your behavior after the bonobo. But instead, we acting just like chimpanzees. You're not superior to animals. You're not disconnected from animals. You are an animal. First, foremost, and primarily. That's the reason why anthropology exists, because there is a connection between all life forms. And then it's real interesting for people who have not reached self-actualization to think that they not like animals. Your unconscious behavior is mammalian. Your unconscious behavior is mammalian. Exactly. Bi biology is our base. Anything outside of that is from the mind, which goes totally against the biological nature. But you, in order for you to go against the biology, you have to be totally functioning from the mind to be conscious of your behavior. Ninety nine percent of people are unconscious. And they think that in their unconsciousness, they are superior to the animals that they actually are themselves. What a concept. So what I'm saying is in your total unawareness, in your total unconsciousness, 98% of your behaviors mimic that of a primate. Since you got share 90, 98% of your human genome. And it's real interesting. Humans think they so different from animals. So let me ask you this question. Why did researchers teach monkeys how to use money to buy things? Why did the researchers teach primates how to use and spend money and the male primates realize that they could exchange money for sex. Why did they start buying prostitutes? Did you know that research took place? Did you know that research took place, sweetheart? We so different, but we act just like monkeys. Exactly like Let's see. Let's let me pull let me let me pull that up so y'all can see that. -la -la. Let 
I was all alone I was feeling very low I needed someone to lift my spirits up So I dropped in on the dance Just to take a glance mm -hmm. She quickly took my hand and we danced and fell in love on a slow jam. Play another slow jam. This time make it sweet. On a slow jam for my baby. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm waiting because I want y'all to see this study. Why is it? Why in the hell is it failing? Okay, let me just... Pull it up from here. All right. Instagram. Okay. And my saved. Go to my saved home. Okay. Saved. Bam. Let's go. Let's go look at that. Look at the look at these monkeys. Scientists teach monkeys how to use money. They end up buying prostitutes. Can we really compare ourselves to monkeys? Yes, the fuck you can. There you go. Given the choice between a number of different foods that they could buy with coins, all food options were initially equally priced and thus the monkeys would always buy the food that they liked the most. But when the price of their favorite food was increased, they would actually buy some of the cheaper food in order to get the most out of their money. And sometimes the male monkeys would completely ignore the food and instead use their coins to pay the females for sex. The females would then use that money to buy food for themselves. In other words, the first recorded case of animal prostitution. In another experiment, the male is the male, <laughs> whether he's a damn worm, a monkey, a turtle, or a goddamn spider. That's the goddamn male. Sex crazed, hungry, and will pay any cost for sex. They completely ignored the food and went to buy the six. So, uh, yeah. Compare yourself to monkeys. Cause they, they share 98% of your DNA. Okay. So back to, back to how you should be operating versus how your ass is operating. <laughs> anyway sh chimpanzees sharing with other males serves to cement political ties and to reinforce hunting cooperation why should other males assist in the strenuous capture of a monkey if not for a piece of meat at the end Apart from such reciprocity among male hunters, offering food to females may work out as a paternal investment. Females share food with their offspring, some of whom may be the hunter's progeny. So a male hunter sharing with females may be indirectly feeding his young. Finally, some of the sharing with females is probably repaid with sex. So you just saw monkeys pay females in money for sex. Then you hear in chimpanzees, the males control the resources 
and share between men and only offer the females food, right, in exchange for sex, right? Which is the reason why men want to offer you a foe for foe and then want you to be a hoe a hoe for them. Foe for foe for you to hoe for hoe. Right? And you wonder why they take you on a date and buy you a plate. Right? And then want you to open up your legs. Right? Want you to meet them after eight so they can take you and buy you a plate. Right? So they can fuck you. Then you wonder why they want to fly overseas because they dollar don't go that far in America. So they want to be able to offer you a morsel of motherfucking bread, right? For you to open your legs, right? Because they monkeys. You you won't ask me again. Can, should we? I mean, I know we share 98% of our DNA with them, but is it really fair to compare us to, to primates? You, yes. Yes. Are you saying that you ain't never heard this happen in human beings? You mean to tell me this ain't how these motherfuckers act? Hmm? I'm trying to tell you, you need to consciously start acting like bonobos instead of unconsciously behaving like chimpanzees. Can I get some more likes, please? Because a thousand people in here with only 842 likes. Can we get some more up here? I'm telling you, you need to consciously act like bonobos instead of unconsciously acting like a goddamn chimpanzee. Because guess what? Ho for ho. Foe for foe for you to hold a hoe, right? <laughs> Your ass is doing it. Time I'm hypergamous. He gonna have to pay in order for me to lay. Hoe for hoe. Right? You you want him to take you to Capitol Grill before you let him make you into a tip drill? You want him to take you to Capitol Grill before he turn you into a tip drill. Ho for ho, fo for fo. I'm trying to get you to act like a damn bonobo instead of a goddamn chimpanzee. You heard me? So, a male hunter sharing with females may be indirectly feeding his young. Finally, some of the sharing with females is probably repaid with sex. Because male chimpanzees are particularly generous to sexually receptive females. They particularly generous to hoes. They particularly generous to sexually receptive females. So let me tell you something. These niggas is mad because they don't have enough bread, right, to pay the bitch that they really want to open her legs because they really be generous to sexually receptive females. So they sit up here and lie and say they don't like a Cardi B. That's a goddamn lie. Cause they a chimpanzee ain't no chimpanzee gonna sit up here and tell me that he ain't got a heart on for cardi b right miss me with the c-a-p cap yeah priscilla hitting you with the slick wraps on the side bars <laughs> huh hmm Right? I'm just, listen, God damn it. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. I'm just letting you know your ass ain't superior. You're a, you're a fucking monkey. 
Embrace your monkeyness. Okay? I'm just trying to get you to be the right monkey. <laughs> anyway, in comparison, why should bonobos share? In comparison, why should bonobos share? So far as we know, there are no hunting teams. So incentives for cooperation are unneeded. And since females often control the food, since the females often control the food, <laughs> there is also less reason for sharing between the sexes. There is also less reason for sharing between the sexes since the females control the food. There's <laughs> when a female offers food to a male, unless it's her son, this does not translate into a parental investment. It does not translate into a parental investment. So here's the thing. You might give this old hobo, this old hobo sexual ass male some food, but you ain't fucking him. But the, the but the chimpanzee wants you to fuck him if he give you a piece of uh B R E A D. Ain't that what the dudes want you to do? Offer up some punani, right? Just for a fucking snicker. How about you a snicker? You supposed to give me six. How we, this bitch, she just a gold digger. Well, what make you think she was a, how about that bitch a snicker? Ain't no man doing nothing for you for nothing. That, 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 chimpanzee. So the only remaining reason then is the cementing of political ties. The only reason to give a male some food in the bonobo society outside of her son is to cement some political ties. Listen, listen, homeboy, listen. I'm not trying to fuck you, okay? We got a ship to run, we got some business to take care of, and we got a society to run. So I'm gonna make an alliance with you politically. And in exchange for your political cooperation, I'm going to give you a banana, right? Unlike, I'm going to give you a banana if you suck my dick. Which one you will, which community you want to be in, goddammit? Tell me which community do you want to be in? Do you want to be in the community where it say, well, I give you a banana if you suck my dick. Or... We need to establish some political ties because we have a community we need to run. We have people we need to feed and we need we have territory that we need to protect. So in exchange for your p political cooperation, I'm going to give you a banana. Deal? I think I want the motherfucking po politics and banana set up. OK. Not penis juice and banana. Right. The only remaining reason then is the cementing of political ties. In the, in the Bonobos case, this probably applies not too much, so much to males as to senior females. Karada found indeed that the category least prepared to share were adult males amongst themselves. Adult males didn't even want to share amongst themselves, right? In the bonobo society. Just, just trash. They just trash. They just trash. Possibly then, the range of return benefits 
associated with sharing is more limited in the bonobo than in chimpanzees. It may sound paradoxical that the more dominance-oriented and violence-prone species may actually have more reasons to share food, but it makes sense given the natural conditions under which chimpanzees engage in this behavior. Detailed data on food sharing in wild bonobos and chimpanzees are needed to verify this hypothesis. The only existing comparisons concern captive apes. My data support the above view. I found chimpanzees to be more tolerant than bonobos in relation to food. This brings me to a final point. The tendency to romanticize bonobos, even if strikingly strikingly pacific, they are not the long lost noble savages. All animals are competitive by nature and cooperate only under specific circumstances and for specific reasons, not because of desire to be nice to one another. The question of why bonobos are egalitarian and tolerant thus needs to be balanced with the question of in which areas they are most competitive. Such areas must exist. The, histor- the history of biological and anthropological research warns strongly against idealization of particular species of human culture or human culture. Pause right there. Pause right there. Females are resource dependent. And males are parasitic. and resource hoarders and you got to make males earn their place you have to make males earn their place because they are parasitic by nature and they have to be controlled and not let out of control so the i the idea that there's more sharing in chimpanzee society is not without stress. It's not without stress. Right? And hardcore manipulation based on resource hoarding. Because the only reason that males dominate in a chimpanzee society is due to the scarce resources or the dispersed resources, right? Which force females to be dependent on males, which is the reason why human males wish for females to be in resource depleted environments because it's about control over the female, right? It's about control over the female. You cannot allow males to get out of control. And simply being males need to be handled a certain way. That's just the bottom line. Right? And it's not about competition. It's about what makes most sense. So you let a world get out of control when you allow it to be run by males. This is why your resources get depleted. And this is why the world looks the way it looks, because that's how males operate. They are parasites to nature, right? Okay, bonobo party composition and social organization. Bonobo party composition and social organization. Like chimpanzees, bonobos live in male 
Philopatric Vision Fusion Societies. Bonobos emphasize female bonding, but show a potential for male bonding. They show a potential for male bonding, but emphasize female bonding. Whereas chimpanzees emphasize male bonding with a potential for female bonding, right? That's how they operate in the human society. This is why you have your bromances. This is why you have bros before hoes. Because they emphasize male bonding. They hunt together. They gang up together. And then they control the resources amongst their male counterparts and then control women with it. That that what they do, right? That's what they do. Male kinship ties focus on the mother rather rather than on brothers. Food occurs in large enough concentrations to allow multiple bonobos to forage together, right? Food occurs in large enough concentrations to allow multiple bonobos to forage together, which means that the women, right, congregate or they team up and then they go get food together. They travel together, right? In packs. Bonobo parties are typically mixed. Bonobos are gregarious. One sees large parties at Wamba and nightly fusions in Lamaco. The female hierarchy based on age and residency is rather vague. Seven, males compete fiercely over rank, which is influenced by their mothers. Females can monopolize prized foods. They often dominate males. And nine, despite hostility between groups, there is also peaceful minglings. So let's go ahead and skip to other side. The other side of the the other side of the river. Right. Let's see. So apes. Apes from Venus, they say, you know, they say women are from Venus and men are from Mars, right? So is she saying that all females with sons have to be separate from the physical community? Women, women, first and foremost, if you're watching, if you are part of my if you're a part of this community and you still refer to yourself as a female, that means you still have a patriarchal mentality. Okay? If you're still referring to yourself as female, you are still patriarchally poisoned, which means that if you are a female with a son, you are still patriarchally poisoned, and you would likely cause conflict in my physical community behind your son. Right? I'm sorry. Y'all ain't acting no different. You can call you can sit up here and talk about 2% DNA difference make a major difference and it don't cuz you act just like motherfucking monkeys. Right? So when you build a, a socio socioeconomic hierarchy, socioeconomic hierarchy like patri- white supremacy patriarchy where you leave black people on the bottom, the closer to the bottom of the pyramid you are is the closer to animalistic nature you are. And this is where you don't have philosophy and you're not operating the mind and you operate just like an animal. And what 
what humans have shown is not only do they operate like chimpanzees, you also operate like rats. You act just like fucking rats. So what major difference is this 2%? What? what? Cause you can play, cause you can rap. Is that the difference? Because you can rap. And that, yeah. Cause you can do the Dougie. Like, it, that's the, it, Cause that's what it sound like the goddamn difference is. Cause your ass can do the Dougie and the stanky leg. Right. And you can do all that shit they doing on TikTok. That's the two percent difference, huh? Is that the two percent difference, right? Cause that's what it sound like to me. Cause you ain't showed me no difference in your behavior between a rat and a goddamn monkey. Right? Anyway, they say women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Right? Oh, yeah. Their ability to smoke reefer. Their ability to go to the store and get a old a, 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 a forty ounce old E is the two percent difference in DNA, right? Right. Oh, your ability to change a car tire—that's what make that's the difference. Other than that, you're a fucking rat and a goddamn monkey. Apes from Venus. Apes from Venus. During a recent visit to Wild Animal Park, northeast of San Diego, I provided old acquaintances with a shareable meal while a camera team recorded their table manners for a popular science program. The bonobos did exactly what they were supposed to do. They resolved tensions over food with sex. They resolved tensions over food with sex. We filmed them in their spacious, grassy enclosure with palm trees. In the dry, warm weather of Southern California, which suits these apes surprisingly well, Given that their natural habitat is moist and humid, Loretta recognized me straight away and in her usual fashion, turned her behind towards me, staring at me from between her legs with bright eyes while stretching out a foot in invitation. How many of y'all, how many of you ho for hoes, you fo for fo ho for hoes, huh? When you want to invite a male, you turn your ass around and invite them with your ass. How many, how many of you, how many of you hoe for hoes is taking your pictures like this? Huh? How many of you hoe for hoes is taking your pictures like that? Hmm? So Loretta recognized me straight away and in her usual fashion turned her behind towards me. Sounds like one of them Instagram models, right? Sound like one of these bitches walking in the grocery store that she see a dude she interested in and start highlighting her damn ass, right? She turned her behind towards me, staring at me from between her legs with bright eyes while stretching out a foot in invitation. 
even though there was a full grown muscular male in her group. Even though there was a full grown muscular male in her group, she still turned her butt. <laughs> right? What what's the difference? I I I I I ain't, I ain't seen the difference, goddammit. Huh? Huh? Oh, the two percent difference is your ability to start a OnlyFans, huh? Tell me, goddammit. Tell me something. Loretta was the uncontested queen. Loretta was the uncontested queen. At the time, the rank order was as follows. Loretta, a 21-year-old female. Achille, a 15-year-old male. Lenore, a 13-year-old female. And Marilyn, an 8-year-old female. When a bundle of ginger leaves, a favorite food, was thrown in front of them, Loretta immediately seized it. After a while, she allowed Achille to eat from her leaves, but Lenore remained reluctant to join. This was not, this was not because of Loretta but because Lenore and Achille, for some reason, do not get along. The caretaker told me that this had become a long-standing problem in the group. Lenore kept looking at Achille, avoiding his every move. These troubles were eventually resolved sexually. Lenore presented from a distance a number of times. When Achille failed to respond, she approached him and pressed her genital swelling against his shoulder, rubbing slightly. After this, she was allowed to join the group without further problems, and all of them peacefully ate together from the food that Loretta held firmly in her hands. Right? Right? Women try to do this. In a patriarchal society, thinking offering a dude punani is going to reduce conflict. But they ain't, they ain't programmed for that. Right? Because they live in chimpanzee society. <laughs> they got you all jacked up. Right? They got you all jacked up. The adolescent of the group... Marilyn, which was the eight-year-old, right, had something else on her mind. She was enamored with Achille, following him around, right? She was enamored with Achille, sexually inviting him many times. Marilyn played quite a while in the pool, manually stimulating her genitals while, dip while dipping her lips in the water. After having excited herself in this manner, she pulled at Achilles' arm and led him by the hand to the water for a copulation. Achilles obliged several times, but was clearly torn between Marilyn and the food bonanza. <laughs> he wanted some food and he wanted the sex, but he was torn between because he don't know which he won't first, right? Or won't most, right? I wondered if Marilyn had developed a water fetish or was just a temporary variation on an old theme. Bonobos seem to put a lot of imagination into their sexual adventures. A lot of imagination, right? What does that tell you? What does that tell you when it comes to imagination, right? Remember, I told you imagination is a feminine, is a feminine concept. Imagination is a feminine principle, right? So sexuality 
being imaginative in the bonobo society is of no surprise as bonobo society is female dominated, right? It's no surprise. In the meantime, Loretta showed great interest in Lenore's baby. Whenever the infant came close, she would barely stimulate his genitals with a finger, followed by a belly-to-belly -belly embrace during which she thrust against the infant. One time, the mother stimulated Loretta's genitals, after which she pushed her offspring towards her as if she wanted Loretta to hold it. In this short stretch of time, we, we thus saw bonobos use sex for sex, Achille and Marilyn, for appeasement, or appeasement, I'm sorry, for appeasement, Lenore and Achille, and as a sign of affection, Loretta with the infant. So, Achille and Marilyn, which is sex for sex, for appeasement, Lenore and Achille, and as a sign of affection, Loretta with the infant. Perhaps we should not call all of this quote unquote sex because people tend to think of it as a self-contained behavioral category aimed at an orgasmic climax. We associate sex with reproduction and sexual desire, whereas in the bonobo, it mixes with all sorts of other tendencies. Gratification is by no means always the objective, and reproduction is only one of its many functions. On the other hand, human sexuality, too, may have a broader significance than commonly acknowledged. In humans... On the other hand, human sexuality, too, may have a broader significance than commonly acknowledged. Our sexual urges are subject to such powerful moral constraints that it may have become hard to recognize how, as Sigmund Freud was the first to point out, they permeate all aspects of social life. Hence where... Hence where the issue arises in analyzing human behavior because humans have been socialized to hide their true nature in the shadows in order to acquiesce to an artificial environment. So a lot of people do not know how far sex actually goes with humans due to the behaviors being relegated to the shadows and people pretending that it don't exist. And this is more, this does more harm to society than good. Because when you push people to secrecy, you create an underground system of cruelty, destruction, and degeneracy. Because of your ignorance of human sexual drive, motivation, and behavior. Right? Because what you don't realize is that the behaviors that you have pushed into the shadows are very prevalent. And that's why you get confused as to how could this person do that? And it, because it was there, you just made them hide it. And now you didn't produce so many people on the planet that you can't control all these people no more. It's getting out of whack. Right. And then on top of that, you're.
pushing sexual stimuli in their face constantly. Right? That's why this is important. Some of these moral constraints exist for good reasons. They do. But you push people to hide because they don't ever stop. They don't ever stop their nature. You just hide it. And I'm not questioning them, but Bonobo Society may quite possibly provide insight into how our sexuality might function without them. Bonobo Society may give us insight to how human sexuality might function without moral controls. So erotic champions... Face-to-face -face mating used to be seen as proof of the dignity and sensibility separating civilized humans from so-called subhumans. The frontal copulatory position was elevated to a cultural innovation of great, great significance, one that fundamentally altered the relationship between men and women. It was felt that preliterate people would greatly benefit from education about this mode of intercourse, hence the term missionary position. In the 1960s, American cultural anthropologists debated its advantages. Our guess is that it changed for the adult female, the relative roles of the adult male and of the infant, since after the innovation, there's much closer similarity for her between her reception of an infant and of a lover. This may have helped to spread the tender emotions of mammalian mother-infant relations to other interpersonal relationships within the band, ultimately with such further consequences as the Oedipus complex. Which we are familiar with that, right? They may have helped to spread the tender emotions of mammalian mother-infant relations to other interpersonal relationships within the band, ultimately with such further consequences as the Oedipus complex. It seems not only that the adult male becomes in face to face copulation, a surrogate suckling to the adult female by virtue of his position, but also that the fe adult female becomes a surrogate suckling to the adult male by virtue of her behavior, which is that of soliciting and receiving a life giving liquid from an adult bodily protuber um, protuberance. Well, I find it hard to reach such armchair or bedroom theories with a straight face. They represent serious attempts by social scientists to set human sexuality apart from that of animals. To every biologist, however, it is crystal clear that sex is one area of human behavior in which cultural experimentation is about as constrained as it is with breathing. Where would we be without the occasional meeting between sperm and egg? Where would we be without the occasional meeting between sperm and egg? There are only so many ways to arrange these meetings. The, hormone, the, hor the hormones urging us to unite with the opposite sex and the, anatom uh, the anatomical features making the things 
the anatomical features making these acrobatic both feasible and pleasurable are biologically dictated. It is also obvious from our frontally oriented genitals that the missionary position, albeit non-obligatory, has been favored by natural selection. Antedated by billions of years of sexual reproduction, the effects of civilization on the sex act are marginal at best. Few sexual patterns typical of our species are absent in bonobos. As Claudia Jordan put it, there is hardly any practically possible mating position that would not occur. So in bonobos, they wow. They wow, they do a lot of different positions. Not just one standard position. They got a lot of flexibility, a lot of imagination going on here. The best way to convey the richness of this, this ape sexuality is simply to list the patterns observed in the San Diego Zoo. Before I went there, I heard that bonobos were sexy. But I was nonetheless amazed by the sheer variety of positions and the extent to which apes mutually, mutually stimulated each other. The most common the most common mating pattern in the ventrodorsal belly to back position. This is also typically, this is also the typical position of most primates. Chimpanzees, for example, most exclusively mate doggy style. Wait a minute. Say, say what? Here go another similar thing with chimpanzees and humans, right? How often do these human males want to quote unquote give you back shots? That's their favorite position. I, the human male is a goddamn chimpanzee. He a chimpanzee and he a dog. He a chimpanzee and he a dog. I'm sorry, weeping angel. No matter how much you comment in the comment section, you are not going to be able to dismiss the evidence of all of the similarities between humans and these apes the monkeys are buying prostitutes they chase sex they are greedy controlling right dominant and then people in the manosphere often compare themselves to gorillas and these other apes. So, so what's the point of you continuously harping on two percent, two percent? This, this, this gives it don't give us everything. I don't give a fuck about all that. I don't give a fuck about all that because the dominant evidence shows a starking similarity in the behavior. So, since we're acting like chimpanzees by default without even knowing we're acting like chimpanzees, why can't we consciously take on some of the behavioral patterns of societal structure of a damn bonobo? You missing the point. You missing the point because you really are distracting from my teachings here and my commentary by constantly trying to get everybody in the comment section to focus on 2%. And we can't look at this. If you don't want to look at the similarities, then don't look at it. Right? If you don't want to see how you can use bonobo politics to improve society, then don't look at it. Right?
But what we ain't finna do is focus on 2% and throw away the 98%. What we ain't finna do is sit up here and focus on the 2% and throw away the 98%. Because when you can show me the difference in the 2%, then I'll listen to you. Right? But please stop. Please stop. Uh drawing drawing the audience in the comment section to a different area because you're not listening to none of this shit that I'm talking about. Cause she real she stuck on it. She stuck on it. Every time I'm literally every time every I'm reading this, but every time I look up, cause I got the comments in the the window right here. Every time I look up, I see a comment from her or him, whoever it is, constantly focused on the damn two percent and arguing a two percent. This ain't no different than a, a person from the mammosphere talking about an exception to the rule or a woman whose ten year old child has a Ph.D. in some subject saying, well, my son got a Ph.D. when that's 1% of the fucking population. I am not focused on 2% difference when there is a 98% similarity in the fucking behavioral patterns of goddamn primates and humans. And based on the way we are living as humans, we mimic the behavioral patterns and our living patterns as chimpanzees. When we can consciously see how we can operate a bit differently by integrating bonobo politics. Because so far what I see is the difference between a bonobo or any, any primate and a human is the ability to fucking moonwalk. Right now the only difference I see is the ability to fucking moonwalk. The other two percent, the, uh, the rest of it is the ability, right, to integrate and control philosophy, to create philosophy and propaganda to brainwash everybody else. That's the that's the other that's the other part of the two percent, right? This higher self that we can tap into through intention, right? Other than that, you act just like a damn animal. So let me finish reading all of this and stop trying to take away or divert from what's being read. Comment on the shit that I'm reading. Right. Comment on what I'm reading instead of trying to distract the audience to go in a completely different diff direction. while you're not listening to none of this shit that I'm reading? Now, again, the whole purpose of me reading this is so that we can be aware of the unconscious behavioral patterns of humans that mimic the behavioral patterns of chimpanzees. And I'm showing you how bonobos operate because they live in a more peaceful environment and how we can take some of the politics and how they behave so that 
women can consciously begin to behave in a different way through the politics of the other primate as to the one that they're actually as opposed to the one that they're by default operating as right Two percent, two percent. I cannot believe this. Huh? Huh? Right. Listen, this is on this is on members chat only tonight. I ain't even letting the everybody in here is members, right? I had a chick that's a member tell me in my comment section after she watched one of my old videos, she going to say in the comment section, and she got a fucking badge by her name, she going to say, I'm finna unsubscribe from you because the way you treat your daughter, as if I treat my daughter horribly because I spent three or four hours <laughs> online. Right. And I let my daughter be in there playing, watching her show or whatever. And I tell my daughter to get out here so I can do my God given work. A person being a member clearly don't mean nothing. Right. I'm all for, I be with my daughter all day long, all day long. And I told her, I told that chick, unsubscribe then. I'm not going to miss your little, I'm not going to miss your little money, right? Because one thing I, one thing I don't want is somebody with no grace, no understanding, no nothing Right? Because you ain't on what I'm on. Right? You ain't even about what I'm about. Right? Right? Because I don't, I don't do, I do not do women who don't have grace and understanding for other women. I don't give a fuck if you don't want to be a member. Take your little money and get the fuck on. Take your money and get the fuck on. Right? But when it comes to, right, right, when it comes to me teaching, right, anybody that wants to take away, like, that, that, that shit there is real annoying, right? You want to focus on a small difference and ignore the vast majority of similarities in behavior when I'm trying to get women to be conscious of how their behavior mimics how their societal structure mimics the primate of the most aggressive between the two without them knowing it. So, if what you're saying does not add into my conversation and on the subject, if what I'm saying and what I'm reading, you can't comment exactly on what I'm reading, then don't take away from my discussion to try to pull people in a totally different damn direction. Totally different damn direction.
You sitting up here watching males act just like these motherfuckers, right? You hear them talking just like the behaviors here. And my women's empowerment movement is focused on centering females and not centering males. So showing you what a society that centers females would look like if we did it and we can consciously change some things because we are humans and we have the ability to logically and rationally think to go against and control nature for the benefit of the whole where everybody can benefit where it's not men hoarding resources and manipulating women to control them for sex right that's not ideal for any animal, not in including us. Right? Your, your learnings for the entire time I've been talking, you've been focused on the 2%. You've been focused on the 2%. Yes, you are taking people away from the purpose of what I'm talking about. You're taking them away from it. Because the whole thing here is political setup. And you're taking, you're focusing on shit that ain't got nothing to do with what we'll be talking about because the human's behavior is exactly that of the damn chimpanzee. You sit up here and look at male bonding. You sit up here and look at a at wars being created and and them sharing resources with their fucking allies while they use women as commodities. They're doing that same shit in chimpanzee society. And instead of focusing on the similarities, you've been harping for the last 45 minutes on 2% and arguing with people in the chat about 2%. You see, the, you see the behavior of the male in all of these groups. Still talking about 2% and can't stop, right? Can't stop. She might be a dude. That might be, they might be a dude, right? Could be, right? But disrupting the whole goddamn flow of the show as she's disrupting the chat or he's disrupting the chat. Right? This is also the typical position of most primates, chimpanzees, for example, almost exclusively mate doggy style. Right. And that's all these males like to do is make doggy style. That's what they prefer. They are fucking chimpanzees. Right. But nobos share with us, however, that their gen genital anatomy seems actually adapted for the ventral, uh, the ventral, ventral belly to belly position. The female's genital tissue, mainly the labia and clitoris, periodically swells up to balloon size, indicating sexual receptivity. Swelling and vulva are located more between the legs than in the chimpanzee, and the clitoris is prominent, erectile, and likewise frontally oriented. Given this anatomy, it is not surprising that females prefer, seem to prefer the frontal position, which guarantees optimal stimulation. 
Wait a minute. Back up. Back up. Swelling and vulva are located more between the legs than in the chimpanzee. And the clitoris is prominent. The clitoris is prominent. Erectile and likewise frontally oriented. Given this anatomy, it is not surprising that females seem to prefer the frontal position, which guarantees optimal stimulation. Optimal stimulation for what? The clitoris, right? Right? Male evolution may have lagged behind. Resulting in a mismatch between male and female preferences. What? Male evolution may have lagged behind. Resulting in a mismatch between male and female preferences. Females invariably invite males lying on their backs and sometimes change towards this position if the male has started out differently. Yet ventral dorsal matings occur about twice as often as ventral ventral matings. The most important point, though, is that thus far all investigators have reported the regular use of both positions, which means that both can be said to be species typical. Also characteristic is pseudo copulation between females mounted ventro ventrally, one female carrying the other. Also characteristic is pseudo copulation between females mounted ventrally, ventro ventrally, one female carrying the other. This posture in which one female may be lifted off the ground by the other while she clings to her, much as an infant clings to its mother allows both females to make sideways movements. The females rub their clitorises together with an average of 2.2 lateral moves per second. The same rhythm as that of a thrusting male. That sounds familiar too, don't it? That sounds familiar too, don't it? What they call that for humans? Tribbing? Tribbing? Or scissoring? Something, something like that? But we talking about 2%. We talking about a 2% though. Alright? Maybe the 2% is the males rubbing their scrotums together from their butt side, right? Maybe the 2% is the males rubbing their damn scrotums together from the butt side. They actually do it from um, like a mountain position instead, though. My damn lighter it. I need my lighter. I need my lighter. The pattern is widely known as genital t is GG rubbing. The pattern is widely known as GG rubbing, an abbreviation of genital genital rubbing first proposed by Corrado. 
It has been observed by all students of bonobo behavior and is unique to the species. Females also sometimes mount each other with both partners facing opposite positions. You know, I saw that. I saw something like that, too. In human females. I saw something like that, too, in human females using one of them toys. Right? I guess the 2% difference, I guess the 2% difference here is that the bonobos don't use no damn toys. They just, they just use what they got. I got that part of the 2% difference. While one female lies on her back, the other stands over her with her back turned. I saw them do that too. Mm-hmm. On P-Hub, I saw women do that shit too. That called tribbing. See, that, 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 that what they call tribbing. Right. So why? So while one female lies on her back, the other stands over her with her back turned, rubbing her genitals against her partners. A comparable but less intense back to back posture occurs between males. With both partners standing on all fours. Briefly rubbing their rumps and scrota together. Maybe that's part of the 2% difference. Because they don't just rub their scrotums together in the humans. They, do, they, they, they go for the gusto. See, in the human male, they go for the motherfucking gusto. But in, 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 the, chip, in, in the bonobo, they just rub their little scrotum together. They just do a little scrotum rubbing. Right, they little they do a little scrubbing, scrotum rubbing in the bonobo. So the two percent difference might be that human males just go for the goal, right? Right, banana in the tailpipe. Right, let's keep it a book. Remember this Priscilla just being real, right? I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm gonna raise the price. So for those who wanna stay members at the high. I think I'm going to end up having to raise the price because there's too many people coming in here on some bullshit. Real serious. The whole point of having a paid membership is to keep the bullshit out, right? But I guess motherfuckers willing to pay, willing to pay just to be on some bullshit. Ain't that some shit? Anyway. This is known as rump to rump action. Rump to rump contact. So you got GG rubbing and rump to rump contact. So rump to rump contact is the males and GG rubbing is the females. Okay. Scroll them serious. <laughs> They're funny, right? Right, the, the, look, look, look. The after hours, the, this, this after hours, high power podcast. <laughs> the, the, the primate, the primate version of what, what? BT uncut, high power uncut, tip drill, tip drill, right? <laughs> tip drill and bonobos, right? 
In contrast, the posture during so-called mutual penis rubbing resembles that of a heterosexual mount. With one male, usually the younger, passively on his back and the other male thrusting on him. You, you hear that? I, I saw that on P-Hub too. <laughs> I saw that on P-Hub too. In contrast, the posture during so-called mutual penis rubbing resembles that of a heterosexual mount. With one male, usually the younger one, passively on his back, Sounds like some goddamn Roman culture shit. Sound like some LGBT shit, right? Right? The older dudes won't need a little young boy. That sound like, right? Two <laughs> percent. But Priscilla, the two percent really means something. All right, I'm waiting to find it. God damn it, I'm waiting to find it because so far. I done seen monkeys buy prostitutes with fucking money, right? I done seen them gang up and, and manipulate women for sex with food, control, and resources. And now they bumping cootie cats and uh, booty cats, right? And now we got an older male and a younger male. Doing their thing. I'm waiting on that goddamn 2% difference. I'm waiting to run across that motherfucker. Right? I'm waiting, goddammit. In contrast, the post during so-called mutual penis rubbing resembles that of a heterosexual mount. With one male, usually the younger, passively on his back, the other male thrusting on him because both males have erections. <laughs> Their penises rub together. Sound like a goddamn sword fight. Broke back mountain. Broke back mountain. I'm waiting on that 2% difference. I have never seen ejaculation during sex between males nor attempts at anal penetration. There you go. That part of your 2%. There it is. There it is. Because in human males, they do uh, AP and they do release a lot of nut milk. They don't, in a pen they, they don't hear though in the monkeys. Like I told you, in, in, in the humans, they go for the gusto, right? <laughs> right, right, right. They go for the goddamn gusto. So maybe humans might be a little bit more freaky than the monkeys. At least for the males, they are. I have never seen ejaculation during sex between males, nor attempts at anal penetration. Kano further describes penis fencing, right? They do that in circle jerks. Listen, this might, this might, in the human males, they circle jerk and they do penis fencing. Right. They they get the, they get the sticks hard and then they. Like an elephant, like, you know, like an elephant, do they know that what they do? Right. So, so far, I only found a piece of the two percent was no was no nut milk. And no banana in the actual tailpipe amongst the primates. Amongst the primates. So maybe the male is, maybe the human is worse than the goddamn primate. 
Maybe I'm giving them too much credit saying that they like the primate. They worse. They worse. They worse. Kano further describes penis fencing, a rare behavior thus far seen only at Wamba, in which two males hang face to face from a branch while rubbing their penises together as if crossing swords. Maybe that's a part of the 2% difference because these niggas ain't doing no acrobatics. They stand up and do it instead of hanging upside down from a tree branch. They stand up on their two feet. They bipedal. They, be, the, the monkeys are acrobats. They, they real creative. I don't think the human male is that damn creative. He's not that athletic. So that's part of the other, that's part of the 2%. I mean, I got to, I, I mean, because listen, the folk has been on 2% for an hour in the comment section. So I'm going to focus on the 2%, right? Everything I read, I'm going to figure out where the 2% is, right? Let's see. All right. During my original studies at the zoo, the same Lenore who is now starting her own family at the Wild Animal Park was still an infant. Like all young bonobos, she was fascinated by sex. Jumping on top of adults, engaged in it, and sometimes pressing her vulva against her mother's swelling when the GG rubbed with other females. When she GG, okay, hold on, let me read it. Jumping on top of adults, engaged in it, and sometimes pressing her vulva against her mother's swelling when she GG rubbed with other females. This way, Lenore partook in whatever went on and learned the various contexts in which sex plays a role. She also initiated sexual games on her own, mainly with willing adolescent males. She could climb on a male's belly, pressing her body against his genitals, whereupon the male, either in a sitting or reclining position, would make a series of thrusts, mounts, with this infant never in, uh, resulted in intromission or ejaculation. So they was hunching. So in other words, they was hunching. Does hunching not take place in humans? Maybe that's part of the 2% was the hunching on the mama. Right? Don't sit up here and lie like y'all wasn't playing house. Yeah, that's the two percent. Yeah, not the mama. That's the yeah, That's the two percent. The mama, but not the not the hunching with the other males her age playing house, hide and go get it, right? I'm just trying to find the 2%, y'all. I'm just trying to find the 2%. Apart from sexual behavior, I saw patterns that are perhaps better classified as erotic in that. Even if adults of the opposite sex were to engage in it, reproduction could not possibly result. 
The first is mouth to mouth kissing, which one partner places his or her open mouth over that of the other, often with extensive tongue to tongue contact. Well, that sounds like human behavior too. That sounds like human behavior. Human behavior. While typical of the bonobo, such French kissing is totally absent in the chimpanzee which engages in rather platonic kisses. This explains why a new zookeeper familiar with chimpanzees once accepted a kiss from a male bonobo. Was he taken aback when he suddenly felt the ape's tongue in his mouth? <laughs> now that's funny. That's funny. Look. While typical of the bonobo, such French kissing is totally absent in the chimpanzee, which engages in rather platonic kisses. So this explains why a new zookeeper familiar with chimpanzees once uh, accepted a kiss from a male bonobo. <laughs> Was he taken aback when he suddenly felt the ape's tongue in his mouth? Dang, the male put his tongue in the male's, the male zookeeper mouth. They straight up, boy. Another erotic pattern. Oh, look at this one. Look at the beginning of this sentence. Check this out. Another erotic pattern is fellatio. That is one partner taking the penis of another in the mouth and stimulating it. This happened regularly during rough and tumble play among juveniles. Chasing and wrestling would be interpreted by erotic games in which all juveniles might participate. Some of them mounting, others engaging in oral sex. Play would assume, resume within a few minutes. The final erotic pattern is manual massage of another's genitals. It sounds like a bunch of human shit going on over here. Right? But the 2%. 2%. Priscilla, you must focus on the 2%. Because... That 2% makes a major difference. I'm looking for the 2%, goddammit. I, I promise you. I'm looking for the 2%. Right? I'm looking for the milk with the blue cap on it. Right? 2% reduced milk, baby. I'm looking for the milk in the grocery store with the blue cap on it. The final erotic pattern is manual massage of another's genitals. In the majority of instances, this was done by the adult male to one of the adolescent males. Oh, Lord, 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 where's my phone? Hold on. I got to go and y'all done fucked around. I got to read you something. I got to read you something. I got to read you something. I'm glad I saved this story because I can't, I can't find this dude shit nowhere else because this, this dude had then took all his blog entries down. So let me go to 2021. When I took this screenshot, I think I got all the screenshots from 2021. January, 
it's either 2020 when I started my when I started my podcast, right? Somewhere around up in here. I say this story. I show sure save this story. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. trust me it's worth the wait so y'all y'all just be patient i promise you it's worth the wait for me to find this story and the next time i have to find this i'm gonna make sure i put it in my my favorites so i don't have to look for this no more like this. I should just probably just search my screenshots. Darling, I, I can't explain whether we lose or win, cause it's driving me insane. And I know I just need one more chance to prove. Oh, okay, we're getting here. Oh, oh, I want I, I got to find this. I want to read this to y'all because this is so this is so very, very interesting. I hate I hate this dude took his uh his whole blog he had all the tea. When I tell you this dude spilled all the tea, I mean all the tea on these guys' behavior. Because I'm looking for the 2%. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the 2%. I'm looking for the lie. I'm looking for the lie, baby. Maybe. Mm. Screenshots. 6,000 screenshots. That's a lot of goddamn screenshots. That's a lot of damn screenshots. I ain't gonna keep y'all waiting that long. If I if I can't find it in the next in the next sixty seconds, then when I do find it, cause I will look for this, cause I it's in here, cause I ran across it about two weeks ago. 
So I know it's in here. It's just about me finding it. But if I can't find it now, I promise you I'm going to come back on another episode and I'm going to read that shit because <laughs> what was found in 1960? What was found in 1960, baby? With these dudes and these uh, young boys? I just rather you, I'd rather you hear from the horse's mouth. All right. Okay, so I'm not going to keep looking for it, but I will if I I will come back and read this shit another day cuz I want y'all to hear it. I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth. Okay. Um, but anyway, So they like jacking each other off. I, I, I done seen that, I done read that, and we know that. We know that. That's what they do, right? So, this was done by a dope male to one of the adolescent males, the younger male with back straight and legs apart. The younger male with back straight and legs apart would present his erect penis to the adult male. Who would loosely close his hands around the shaft making caressing up and down movements. This is the social equivalent of masturbation, which, which bonobos also engage in. In the males, neither genital massage nor masturbation was ever observed to produce ejaculation. Maybe that's part of the 2% because in my observation of human males, they like nut milk more than women do. In my observation of human males, they like almond milk more than the females. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So maybe that's part of the 2%. The most regular masturbators were adolescent males and adult females. Oh, the cougars. The cougars. We know cougars exist too, right? Is that part of the 2%? Huh? Yup, Aaron, they gay. They gay. 96 to 98% sharing of the human genome. But Priscilla, the 2%, the 2% Priscilla is just not, we can't really compare, we can't compare chimpanzees and bonobos to humans because the 2% Priscilla well, I'm still looking for the 2%. I promise you I'm looking for it as I'm reading. I ain't, I've, been, I've been running across the 98% the whole time, though. 
with the exception of the upside down swinging uh, sword fights because the, 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 the human male ain't that damn acrobatic and the lack of almond milk production. That, that, them the 2%, that, that's part of the 2% that I have found so far. I'm just saying. <laughs> the latter is significant because of yet another uniqueness claim. From Frank Beach to Desmond Morris, scientists have declared female orgasm to be exclusively human. Oh, there you go. That a 2%. That a 2%. Scientists have declared female orgasm to be exclusively human. While people readily assume males to enjoy sex, many appear skeptical about females. This reflects the Puritan belief, right? As if women don't have, women don't enjoy sex, right? They don't in, they don't have they don't enjoy climax, right? Well, of course if you fucking a male, you're not going to enjoy climax 80% of the time. 80% of the time you won't enjoy climax if you're fucking a male, okay? But this reflects the puritan belief prevalent until early this century that sex is a man's privilege and a woman's chore. Uh-oh. But men will argue with me and say that women enjoy sex, right? And that, that sex is not a chore for women. Even though women keep expressing that it's a chore and then men push the belief that sex is a man's privilege and a woman's chore. That we just supposed to give up our bodies for male satisfaction. Mm hmm. Show sure enough. So sure enough. To assume that female sexual arousal is limited to our species is to deny it the same biological roots as male arousal. Check. You hear that? To assume... That female sexual arousal is limited to our species is to deny it the same biological roots as male arousal. If female bonobos habitually masturbate, however, this activity must surely produce enjoyable sensations. Exactly. So it ain't part of the two percent because they do orgasm. Why the fuck would they be masturbating if they didn't? Otherwise, why would they do it? We also know from laboratory experiments with uh, stump tail macaques, another primate with a highly developed sexual repertoire, that we are not the only species in which females at the climax of copulation experience an increased heart rate and rapid uterine contractions. These monkeys and probably many other primates as well fit the physiological criteria of orgasm as defined by Masters and Johnson. Uh-oh. Right? Uh-oh. 
Nope. They orgasm too, just like human females who play with their click because they not getting no orgasm from no dick. 80% of the time. Oh, baby, this finna get good. Are y'all like are y'all liking this story time? I mean, cause I know some of y'all gotta get up and you know, it's late, but I'm enjoying tonight. And I know I you, you know, y'all can always come back and watch it. You watch the replay, you know. But are y'all enjoying the reading of this book? Cause I am. I sure am. If the sounds and facial expressions of bonobos, listen, if the sounds and facial expressions of bonobos are any indication, not only masturbation, but also sexual intercourse might be gratifying. Females frequently bare their teeth in pleasure grin during coitus particularly towards the end when the male slows down for his final deeper thrust. Furthermore, females often utter characteristic screams and squeals before or during coitus, as well as when they engage in GG rubbing, as well as when they engage in GG rubbing. With other females. <laughs> Sexual partners often face each other so they can closely monitor each other's facial expressions and sounds. And, they ex and the exchange becomes quite intense and intimate. Indeed, sexual activities may be interrupted in case of a mismatch of emotions as indicated by an early study at the Yerkes Primate Center by Sue Savage, Rumba, and Beverly Wilkerson. Lest this overview of the sexual and erotic behavior of bonobos leave the impression of a pathological oversex species, I must add, based on hundreds of hours of watching bonobos, that their sexual activity is strikingly casual and relaxed. It seems a completely natural part of their social life. Also, even though the bonobo is, is a serious encounter or serious contender for the title of sex champion of the primate world, its sexiness should not be exaggerated. Bonobos do not in fact, engage in sex all the time. At the zoo, the average bonobo initiates sex once every one, once every one and a half hours, whereas the average chimpanzee does so once every seven hours. In the wild, the frequencies are no doubt lower. Many of the contacts, particularly those with very young, are not carried through to the point of sexual climax. The partners merely pet and fondle each other. Even the average copulation between adults is quick by human standards. 13 seconds at the San Diego Zoo and 15 seconds at Wamba. Well, look, they your other 2%, right? Because the human male might last 65 seconds longer, right? 65 seconds longer. And if the male, the human male could initiate sex as often, if he was in a more relaxed situation, he probably would. He probably would. Attractive at a price. While the influence of economic factors and social pressures should not be underestimated, 
The bedrock of human nuclear family is the bond between husband and wife. This applies regardless of whether a man has one or as allowed in the majority of cultures more than one wife. This bond is sustained in part through regular sexual intercourse. Sex could not have come to play this pivotal role without a dramatic prolongation of female receptivity. Let's read that part again. This bond is sustained in part through regular sexual intercourse. This nuclear family husband and wife shit. Sex could not, well, sex could never have come to play this pivotal role without a dramatic prolongation of female receptivity. Question, how did human female receptivity come to be in the way that it is? How did human female sexual receptivity come to be prolonged the way it is right now? Could it have something to do with forced habitation, cohabitation? With forced cohabitation and brainwashing? Because sex could never have come to play this pivotal role without a dramatic prolongation of female receptivity. If women, like most female animals, engaged in sex only a few months each year, if women... Like most female mammals engaged in sex only a few months each year or only a few days each month, they might have had a, they might have a hard time winning male commitment. Winning male commitment. The only reason that women are trying to win male commitment is because of what? The artificial creation of a patriarchal society that centers males and conditions women to try to keep males. I'm a professional woman. And and, and and you're a failure. I don't give, don't tell me about your profession. You're a failure if you can't keep a man. Say whatever the hell you want to. If you can't keep a man, your profession will never make you happy. It will never do for you what God made man to do for you. Whose goddamn speech is that? Whose speech is that? Farrakhan. Brainwashing. And resource control. And forced cohabitation. Is what has made. Women. Receptive. Or have prolonged receptivity sexually, which has oversexed the woman unnaturally. This bond, listen, let's reread it. Let's reread the whole thing. While the influence of economic factors 
and social pressures should not be underestimated. The bedrock of the human nuclear family is the bond between husband and wife. The bedrock for the nuclear family, which is an artificial creation, is based on the bond between husband and wife. This applies, this applies regardless of whether a man has one or, or as allowed in the majority of cultures, more than one wife. This bond is sustained. This bond is sustained in part through regular sexual intercourse sex could never have come to play this pivotal role without a dramatic prolongation of female receptivity if women like most female mammals engaged in sex only a few months each year or only a few days each month, they might have a hard time winning male commitment. But in a society where females are centered and it's matriarchal, and males are not the center, women would operate like that because they would not be focused on trying to keep a male or get a male's commitment because they don't need a male's commitment. So the woman is clearly outside of her nature through social programming, right? And social pressures. That's why he started to send us off like this. While the influence of economic factors and social pressures should not be underestimated because they have a major role in this. Of course, in modern societies, many women raise children without direct male involvement. Of course, in modern societies, Many women raise children without direct male involvement. But it is safe to assume that this option hardly existed for our ancestors. Surrounded by predators and enemies and living a marginal existence in which every source of substance counted Male support made a huge difference. It made it possible for proto hominid females to raise more offspring than the apes from whom they had descended. It made it prominent for them to raise more offspring. Oh, wow. To raise more offspring, to put it to put it to work some more, right? Here's a picture. Y'all, y'all want to see the picture of doing the butt? You want y'all want to see a picture of the 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 chimp? I mean the the bonobo males doing the butt. Here you go. There they go. 
doing a button. Uh, 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 uh. Dang, Silver Bunny, you got you some almond milk, huh? You got you some nut milk. You gonna put that in your Cheerio? She gonna put some nut milk in her Cheerio, y'all. <laughs> Two adult males. Engage in rump-to-rump -rump contact. They mutually rub their scrota together in the male equivalent of the, uh, of the typical genital rubbing among females. In bonobo society, males are clearly the more competitive sex. The vast majority of aggressive chases at Wamba's feeding site are by males against males. So, it made it possible for the proto-hominid females to raise more offspring than the apes from which they had descended. It might be the chief reason why we, and not they, populated the world. Although male apes cavert with youngsters tolerate their antics and sometimes protect them fiercely it is fair to say that care of the young and our closest relatives rest squarely on female shoulders y'all hear that y'all hear that although male apes cavert with youngsters tolerate their antics and sometimes protect them fierce, fiercely it is fair to say that the care of the young and our closest relatives rests squarely on female shoulders. Don't that sound like, don't that sound like what's happening in the human society? Huh? Sound like it to me. Sound like it to me. After a, gest after a gestation of around eight months, the mother nurses for four years. After a gestation of around eight months, the mother nurses for four years and carries and protects her offspring for even longer. The maternal investment of apes is surpassed in magnitude only by that of a handful of other long-lived mammals, such as elephants, whales, and ourselves. Female chimpanzees give birth about once every six years, whereas bonobos at Wamba do so about every four and a half years. Even if this birth rate is slow compared to those of most other animals, it may be the maximum that apes in the wild can manage. Bonobo females at Wamba sometimes give birth so quickly after the previous time that they end up nursing two offsprings. Sound just like goddamn humans. Right? Sound like humans to me. One sees the mother walking bipedally with an infant clinging to her belly and a juvenile riding her back. Sound like sound like what they how they roll in Africa and somehow, uh, somehow how y'all roll when y'all carrying y'all children. One on your back 
and one on a leash. If you're a white woman, y'all like to put y'all babies on, a, on one of them little kid leashes, right? Y'all like to put y'all babies on them little kid leashes and have them in the backpack thing, right? That's how you do. Stop acting like you don't do that. So one sees the mother walking by pedally with an infant clinging to her belly and a juvenile riding her back. This must be a heavy load. Despite the absence of a stable of stable mate bonds, bonobos share with us dramatically extended sexual receptivity. Females are most willing to engage in sex when they are maximally swollen. During this phase, mating males also thrust faster, perhaps reflecting greater arousal. Increased receptivity has, uh, has been achieved by extending the period of genital swelling, whereas the chimpanzee has a menstrual cycle of approximately 35 days. The bonobos is closer to 45 days, and the period of swelling covers a greater portion of the cycle, 75% to 50% in the chimpanzee. In addition, bonobo females resume swelling within a year after having given birth, when they are definitely not yet fertile which further adds to the amount of time when they are sexually attractive to males. These characteristics make for quite a contrast. The chimpanzee female is receptive less than 5% of her adult life, whereas the bonobo female is so nearly half the time. The use of sex to promote sharing, to negotiate favors, to smooth ruffled feathers, and to make up after fights is enough to make it the magic key to bonobo society. On top of this, Sexual attraction may explain the species' unique party organization. Remember how bonobo society is characterized by mixed traveling parties and female bonding? Integration of young females into the residential community is accomplished by frequent genital-genital rubbing or GG rubbing and grooming. What? Integration of young females into the residential community is accomplished by G frequent GG rubbing and grooming. Sex reduces competition among females and allows them to travel and forage together. Females are much of the time interested in sex with each other as well as attractive to the males. Females are much of the time interested in sex with each other as well as attractive to the males. There is almost always a receptive female present in these parties, which in turn guarantees male company. So the males like menage a trois too. So if it's a menage a trois going on, you can guarantee that a male will be present because you know the males find that attractive. That sounds a whole lot like human males. Baby, baby, can, can you give me a threesome for my birthday? Come on, I'm just asking you one time. This is for my birthday. It's special, right? Right? But they'll sit up here and act like 
They'll sit up here and act like that's a problem. No, it's only a problem when they ass ain't included. I'm still looking for the 2%. Chimpanzee males too consort with swollen females, but the females of their species are much less often in this state. In bonobos, the same attraction combined with prolonged sexual receptivity has resulted in almost continual male-female association. It is impossible to know what came first. Attraction between the sexes or attraction among females. In captive data are any indication. If captive, if captive data are any indication, female bonding seems a basic feature of bonobo society. Observations by Amy Parrish at San Diego's Wild Animal Park demonstrate a distinct preference of bonobo females for one another's company. In bonobo females, they prefer one another's company, the females, right? So check this out. Eight different groupings were tried out at the park. Eight different groupings was tried out at the park. Most of which consisted or included a single adult male, a single adult male, two adult females, and a couple of immatures. The adult partners varied. Three different males and five different females figured in the rotations. But females always had a partner choice between adults of both sexes. Hundreds of records told us how much time individuals spent together, who approached whom, which partners groomed together, and so on. The conclusion was that females favored the company of members of their own sex. Well, I got another research paper to read to you in terms of humans. I'll be having all these goddamn research. Oh, I just found it. I just found some more research. Okay, this is probably what I've been looking for for a, a while. Yeah. Let's see. Where is that? Where is the one that I just read on fucking TikTok? I'm going to have to start saving this shit on my damn bookmarks so I don't have to go back looking for this shit. Damn, what was that research paper that I read? Uh, huh. Let's see. Damn, man. I got a... Damn. Mm. Okay. 
Okay, so I can't remember the name of that research paper. God damn it. So I got two things that I got to find. And I read this I read this particular research paper to my audience on TikTok. I might be able I might be able to find it when I go back and replay that. But when I find it, I will give it to you. But for the most part, it spoke about it spoke about the issue men have with women, right? And the difference in educational levels, right? So the more confident and secure a woman had become, the more she preferred to be amongst members of her own sex. And the less and the less men had access to sex, the more they dislike women. Now, this was a this was a research paper that was published in 2006 or two yeah 2006 before the manosphere really popped off or 2004 before the manosphere really popped off. So, um, I will find that um, and come back with that as well as the other one on another show, right? But just to let you know that's what it was about, okay? So, the conclusion was that females favored the company of members of their own sex. Females sat together, groomed each other, and played together considerably more than than with the male in their group. They actively pursued these contacts. Females allowed each other around seven times more often than they followed the male because females also associated more with immatures, many of whom were their offspring. Adult males tended to be rather peripheral to group life. Sound like, sound like they actually got it right. Because that's that that show, that's the behavior that is shown when women are self confident, right? So, do bonobos throw away new light? Okay, Does, do bonobos throw any new light on human social evolution? That's a question. That's a question. Do bonobos throw... Any new light on human social evolution. The bonobo social system offers an alternative to what is otherwise a rather bleak picture of opportunities for female bonding. When I began my studies, I expected to see strong bonds between males and females because this is what field workers reported at the time. I discovered that the bonds among females are actually stronger than those between the sexes. Moreover, females control access to preferred foods, sharing it with each other more than with males. Females form alliances in which they cooperatively attack the injure, uh, attack and injure males. They dominate them. And as much as bonobo females are generally unrelated, their society shows that kinship is not a requirement for female bonding. Right? So, females form alliances in which they cooperatively attack and injure males. They dominate them. 
Inasmuch as bonobo females are generally unrelated, their society shows that kinship is not a requirement for female bonding. Some people believe that women are an exception, that only women are capable of forming enduring friendships, even if unrelated. Others believe that women aren't very good at bonding with one another at all. The bonobo is changing all this by showing that women are not the only bonded hominid females. Women, all women of the, uh, of the human species have to do is become conscious. That's all we got to do because we are operating in an unconscious state. Right. Were you one of the first to make a connection between the GG rubbing bonding and power of female bonobos? How are these elements related? Evidence for female bonding and power is strong and growing. Evidence for female bonding and power is strong and growing. Power is a collective effort or collective achievement, right? It's a collective achievement. There is evidence in the older literature that it is just that no one had put the whole idea together. There were also confusing elements which have only recently been clarified. For example, it was found that males and females affiliated the most at Wamba, but this included mother-son bonding. I saw the significance of GG rubbing was most clearly when group compositions were being shifted at the San Diego Zoo. Immediately following these changes, the females were obviously not yet bonded. They did show an interest in GG rubbing with one another, though. In one group in particular, the females tried to GG rub at every occasion. The group male, Vernon, didn't like their behavior. Wait a minute. Hold on. We getting to we getting to the lesbian cult shit now in the in the in in the monkeys in the monkeys we got a manosphere motherfucker here that don't like the female bonding power and we don't want to compare these motherfuckers to monkeys we don't want to compare us to Apes and chimpanzees and bonobos, right? But they talking about the lesbian cult right now. And Vernon, the, the, the bonobo is pissed off. Look, he pissed. Look at this shit. So immediately following these changes, the females were obviously not yet bonded. They did show an interest for G in GG rubbing with one another, though. In one group in particular, the females tried to GG rub at every occasion. Boy, they would do, they would they was in that bitch tripping and scissoring, right? And the group male Vernon did not like their behavior. <laughs> Whenever they GG rubbed, he would mount a massive display screaming and jumping over them. 
screaming and jumping over them. Sound just like, sound just like the human male, don't it? Look, so whenever they GG rubbed, he would mount a massive display screaming and jumping over them, sometimes hitting them on the back. Throwing a temper tantrum. The females began to wait, acting as if they had no idea of interacting with each other. And watch him walk off over the hill. Both females would then rise, look to the left and to the right as if they were checking where Vernon was and quickly sneak behind a tree to GG rub together. Listen, did y'all hear that? After this mother, after Vernon, bitch ass, throw a damn temper tantrum. Stop, 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 y'all stop enjoying each other, right? The, the females got to pretend like ain't shit going on. Wait till that nigga leave, and then they go sneak off. <laughs> Behind a tree and rub together. Listen, <laughs> I'm looking for the two percent, though, y'all. I'm looking for the goddamn two percent. <laughs> it was impossible for Vernon to be on the alert 24 hours a day. This nigga wanted to stay up and make sure that they wasn't. Tribbing and motherfucking <laughs> and scissoring, but he couldn't. He this nigga tried to take no those. Look, Vernon tried to take no those, stay up on coffee and Red Bull to make sure, but he couldn't do it because his bitch ass was falling asleep. <laughs> It was impossible for Vernon to be on the alert 24 hours a day. After a couple of weeks, the females did indeed seem to have a bond. And Vernon gave up interfering. He was trying to prevent them from getting a bond with each other because he knew that the bond between the women would dominate his ass. So... After they created the bond, his ass gave up. I had a feeling that he wanted to prevent them from GG rubbing because it was part of their bond formation, which was ultimately not in his interest. You hear that? Listen to me. This idea that they didn't create it with this lesbian cult shit is because these motherfuckers are just like monkeys and they know the power of a female bond this is why they have a concerted effort to keep women fighting against each other you don't want them to be friends right pimpology right and they try to deter women based on demonizing quote unquote lesbianism so for this purpose because this the truth about the whole motherfucking situation this the truth about the goddamn situation so let's let let me see if I can pull up. I know I know I'm batting zero with pulling up shit tonight. Listen, I know I'm batting zero with pulling up shit tonight, but let's let's see. Let's see if I can find Let's see if I can find this 
Let's let's hope let's hope I let's let's hope I hit this one. Shit. But I might I'm I might I might bat I'm I might strike out on this one too. <laughs> I might strike out on this one too. <laughs> I know who sent it to me. <laughs> Dude don't know how long ago it was. Hold on. I might Zero, God damn, God damn it, zero, <laughs> bad and motherfucking zero. Y'all remember that? She might have. It might. It might be in uh. It might be in my uh. It might be in my Facebook. It might. That's that's where it might be at. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that motherfucker might be. That motherfucker might be in a. Oh yeah, zero, zero. I can't find none of the videos. I not a single one of them goddamn videos. To, to to show my evidence, Lord have mercy, right? But we saw we saw the video before. I didn't played it a few times on here, but I know y'all remember the video with the with the dancing, right? At the party, right? Remember the dancing video at the party where the chicks was dancing on each other, and the dude came from behind the goddamn from behind the fucking uh. DJ Booth and jumped in the middle of them to break them up. I'm telling you, these motherfuckers is monkeys. I'm telling you, they monkeys. And they don't want women to have bonds with each other. It ain't cold. It is not the night. I'm batting motherfucking zero for putting up shit. <laughs> Hey, well, you can't win them all. I'm typically good at pulling up shit, but not this time. Not this time. Shit. Anyway. I had a I had the feeling that he wanted to prevent them from GG rubbing because it is part of their bond formation, which was ultimately not in his interest, since females use these bonds to keep males away from food and to attack them. How widespread is female dominance in captivity? Hmm? How widespread is female dominance in captivity? My best data are from the Stugart Zoo, where I conducted experiments, the ones in which chimpanzees and bonobos were allowed to fish for honey. In the chimpanzee group, the male always fed first. But in the bonobo group, the females had feeding priority. There, were always se there was always sex between the females in this situation, especially before they fed together. Sex apparently facilitated their relationship, thus helping them dominate the male. I have seen similar situations at the Frankfurt Zoo and the San Diego Zoo. At the latter zoo, if sugar cane was bundled, a female would typically grab it. The females would then divide it up amongst themselves with Vernon, the alpha male, sitting off to the side. <laughs> Listen, can you imagine that? Imagine that. Look, the alpha male in the group, the female go and get the sugar cane and give it and divide it up amongst all the females and, and, and Vernon sitting in the corner <laughs> hungry than a motherfucker. <laughs> Vernon in the corner hungry than a motherfucker just watching them eat sugar cane. <laughs> all the chicks eating sugar cane. He sound a lot like Ken, don't it? It sound a lot like Ken in the Barbie movie, huh? And Barbie told his ass, 
Not, uh-uh, tonight is girls night and left that nigga outside, left them two kids outside. <laughs> Vernon is the alpha male. Listen, Vernon is the alpha male of the group. He, he the alpha male of the bonobo group, right? So. <laughs> so at the latter zoo, if sugar cane was bundled, a female would typically grab it. The females would then divide it up amongst themselves, with Vernon, the alpha male, sitting off to the side. There were days on which both adult males just wouldn't get anything. That that's <laughs> there was days that the women didn't feed that motherfucker nothing. Now I, listen, I'm not saying that in a society that we wouldn't feed the males. I wouldn't let I wouldn't let them starve. I wouldn't we would not let them starve, okay? I, we ain't gonna let them starve. But I ain't gonna lie, this shit funny as hell, right? Burning in the motherfucking corner. <laughs> Stomach growling like a motherfucker. There were days on which both adult males just wouldn't get anything. The only exception occurred just after the group merger described above. The females were still unfamiliar and unbonded. Then Vernon did an aggressive display and would take the food for himself. Right? So the females were still unfamiliar and unbonded. Then Vernon did an aggressive display and would take the food for himself. So when the females are not bonded, the male displays his aggression. So the so female bonding is critical to be able to control the males in in this society, right? Because if not, then the males would use their aggression to dominate. This is a word to you as a woman, damn it. This is a word to you as a woman. Stop fighting against each other. What you fighting? What you fighting for? Own up, stand up, get up. Create alliances with other women cuz that's the only way you going to get by here, right? So then, so when the females were unbonded, then Vernon did an aggressive display and would take the food for himself. So you say females attack males. Do they ever cause injuries? The current alpha female of Stuttgart, uh, uh, of Stuttgart Zoo is definitely dominant over the adult male. The same applied to the previous alpha female. It is assumed that she once bit his penis almost in half. Baby, they had, baby, she went Lorena bop it on him. She went Lorena bop it on him. It is assumed that she once bit his penis almost in half. She was always attacking him. And one day his penis was found cut clearly or cl cut cleanly in two. Hanging by a tiny piece of skin. The vets managed to reattach it. What did the, what did he do to her? That, what the hell did he do to her for her to bite his shit off? So bad that it was hanging by a piece of skin. Frankfurt Zoo has a menopausal female. She's about 45 years old. The oldest in captivity. She was definitely dominant over anyone else, including her three daughters. The females occasionally held down the male and attacked him. 
and have bitten off parts of his fingers and toes. I sometimes wonder whether the high rate of physical abnormalities in males at Wamba may at least uh, partially stem from female aggression. Why is female bonding emphasized in bonobo society? Why is female bonding emphasized in bonobo society? There are lots of disadvantages to females that live in a male philopatric system. You hear that? You hear that? There are lots of disadvantages to females that live in a male philopatric system. A system in which males stay in the natal group and in which inbreeding is prevented by female migration. In the chimpanzee, this system makes sense as females need to disperse to solitary ranges to gather enough food. The bonobo habitat, however, is richer and capable of supporting female aggregation. So, The environment in bonobo society is richer in resources. Remember, I tell you, females are resource dependent. They're resource dependent. And because of their resource dependency, a resource rich environment creates female domination. This is why males in the human society have made a concerted effort to keep women out of control of resources. That's why fiat currency was created and all of that, all of those resources were shifted into the hands of men and women were kept out of all of these positions to keep them from providing for themselves. Because if you give a woman resources, she will become dominant. Give a woman resources and she becomes dominant. In chimpanzee society, the resources are more spread out and they're more dispersed which means that they're more scarce in a central location, which creates room for males to be dominant. This is why when you look in male-dominated societies, you see a lot of scarcity. You see a lot of scarcity and resource depletion because that's where males function at. That's why they can't wait for society to collapse so that they can force women to depend on them in scarcity. Men do not function well in abundant environments. Males do not function well in abundant environments because women become dominant. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. The bonobo habitat, however, is richer and capable of supporting female aggregations. In such an environment, females might be better off staying together with female kin. Stay together, right? So why did bonobos not revert to a female philopatric system? That is a system in which females remain in their natal group. Perhaps it was evolutionarily too costly to completely revamp the existing social organization. 
the next best alternative for females would then have been to behave with unrelated group males as they would with female kin. By mimicking a female philopatric system, they regained some of its advantages. They, in essence, made their own destiny, which is what women need to do. They need to create their own destiny. But in this system that we live in, men have been typically governing female destiny, which needs to stop, right? While some feminist scholars believe that bonding among women is uniquely human, the extent of bonding among bonobo females probably exceeds that found among women in most human societies. I agree, right? We'll read this one another day. We'll read this one another day about infanticide. Okay. So you remember, okay. So I showed you, I showed you the dudes, the males doing the butt, right? Then here you go with your, here you go with your chick, chickadees. The unique, bono the unique bonobo behavior is mutual GG rubbing between females in a face-to-face -face position. The female on the bottom clings to the one on the top while they rub their swelling sideways against each other. These contacts are brief but intense, serving mostly to alleviate strained relationships. Okay. An adult male bonobo grooms an adult female. Captive studies indicate that males seek contact with females. Check this out. So this this is him. This is him grooming her, right? An adult male bonobo grooms an adult female. Captive studies indicate that males seek contact with females, but that females prefer one another's company, a rather puzzling, puzzling preference, given that females are also the migratory sex and thus are unrelated to each other. Female bonding is perhaps the sharpest contrast between bonobos and chimpanzees. Now check this out. A female bonobo climbing a tree above. A female bonobo climbing a tree above. The small size of her infant makes it highly unlikely that she is fertile at this point. Yet she has a genital swelling. The male carries a sugar cane while exhibiting an erection. Listen to this. The male carries sugar cane 
while exhibiting an erection, inviting a female for sex in typical bonobo fashion. Food triggers sexual excitement. There they go offering food again. Hey, baby, I got a sugar cane. And I got another cane. I'm willing to give them both to you. A sugar cane. He coming over there with a sugar cane. And a penis cane. Wanting to trade food for sex. And then you wonder why you keep running into dudes that expect sex after he done bought you a box of chicken nuggets. Because y'all asking these dudes to do too much. Because they asses are fucking monkeys. Okay? They eternal goddamn monkeys. Sugar cane. Hey, lover, I got a sugar cane that I want to lose in you. Baby, can't stand the pain. Hey, lover, sugar, don't you see? Oh, so many things that you do to me. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Tell me that you love it, girl. Yeah. One female leads another to a quiet spot for some undisturbed GG rubbing. At the time this photograph was made at San Diego's Wild Animal Park, one male was systematically interfering with intimacies among females. Once the females had gained dominance over him, his, inter- his intervention ceased. And the females could GG rub in the open. So the, 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 they went. These are females right here. Them the females. They trying to go off. For some GG rubbing, a male tries to intervene and they dominate him. Both of them dominate him until he quit. And then after he run out of energy, they go and get their groove on. They, they prefer each other over. They prefer each other over sugar cane. They prefer each other over the goddamn sugar cane. Hey, lover, I got a sugar cane that I want to lose in you. Baby, can you stand the pain? No, we don't want no sugar cane. I'm just letting you know, listen, I'm the goddamn messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Some human societies... Okay, it say bonobos and us. Boy, y'all hanging in here with me tonight, baby. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and we in here just getting some laughs, some education. Y'all hanging in this motherfucker on a Wednesday. (laughs) You hanging in this motherfucker. (laughs) Look, chapter 5, bonobos and us, right? No single one of the existing man-like apes is among the direct ancestors of the human race. They are all the last scattered remnants of an old catarine branch, once numerous, for which the human race has developed as a special branch and it's in a special direction. Some human societies have known extraordinary sexual freedom. An extreme case where the people of the Pacific before the arrival of Westerners who brought not only Victorian values, 
but also venereal diseases. They brought VD. <laughs> yeah, they sexual freedom, right? Brought Victorian values and VD. <laughs> Bronislaw depicted cultures in this region as having very has has having few taboos and inhibitions. And the Hawaiians' remarkable sexual permissiveness led the American sexologist Milton Diamond to call sex a salve and glue for the total society. Perhaps there is a bonobo in all of us. Perhaps there is a bonobo in all of us. I think it is. I think it is. I think it's a lot of bonobo in us. I just think a lot of motherfuckers are denying it. Right. I think a lot of people are ashamed to admit that it's some damn bonobo in them. Right. Because you've been shamed. You're scared to express your true motherfucking desires because you're scared of what a motherfucker going to say. Right. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, you're doing all kind of bonobo shit. Me, I, we, we saw what bonobos do. And behind closed doors, this is what a lot of you motherfuckers is doing. Right? See, Messy C told you the other day. Remember when we was on live the other day and I played Messy C and he was like, well, he, and the dude asked, well, so, so you, uh, well, you ever think you're going to get married again? And he was like, well, it all depends. Will I fall in love with some dick if I fall in love with some pussy? Right? Right? See, some of these, some motherfuckers are just not ashamed to let you know what it is. That they bonobos in the open. Like, like, just, just, just depends whether I fall in love with some, some dick or if I fall in love with some pussy. Right? They bonobos out in the open, but your ass is a hidden bonobo. Right. You're a hidden bonobo. Perhaps there's a bonobo in all of us. As participants to a symposium on human sexuality, we're once tempted to speculate. Even if people do not engage in sexual reproachment in the same public manner as bonobos, in the privacy of their homes, similar processes take place. That right? It do. It is not for nothing that the French speak of reconciliation on the pillow. Wait a minute. It is not for nothing that the French speak of reconciliation on the pillow. Reconciliation, so they'll, how you, whatever you, how you say that in French, right? Our fascination with bonobos is precisely because consciously, or unconsciously, we recognize the way sex functions in their social relationships. There was a time when such issues could not be openly discussed. Not even with regard to animals. Animal sexuality was kept at a distance. It reminded us too much of our own carnality. That's real interesting. I told you that we created a completely artificial environment that disconnected us from the truth about who we are as humans. This is why humans, this right here, is why humans think that they're superior to animals because they have disconnected themselves from their animal nature through shame. 
because they didn't like the mirror. They didn't like the shadow. So they lied to themselves. They lied to themselves, creating this mass delusion. So there was a time when such issues could not be openly discussed, not even with regard to animals. Animal sexuality was kept at a distance. It reminded us too much of our own carnality. I want you to understand that anytime you're dealing with a hater in society, right? That tries to criticize what's going on with you. It's because they see something in you that reflects themselves that they don't like in themselves because other people are a mirror to us. And the animals were a mirror to humans that humans hated. And that's why they disconnected themselves from the rest of nature. And that's why we didn't tow up the fucking planet the way we did, did because we really believe in our fucked up minds that we are separate and superior to animals when in actuality we are the animals that have gone crazy. We the animals that done gone crazy. As epitomized by the chimpanzees old taxonomic name Pansatyrus monkeys and apes were judged were judged lascivious Vernon Reynolds attributes thus unfavorable opinion oh attributes this Vernon Reynolds attributes this unfavorable opinion which started with early Christians. Uh Uh-oh, it started with who? Early Christians. Right? The manipulated patriarchal beliefs that stole everything from the divine feminine, Egypt, and flipped the whole motherfucking narrative. Yeah, that, that Christianity. which started with the early Christians to the moderation of appetites that marked the rise of their religion. Self-denial became a source of strength. Self-denial became a source of strength. This is how humans lost themselves and lost their way. And have a a problem and a difficult time finding and connecting to the authentic self because they have been bullied out of it through Puritan beliefs and through religiosity. Self-denial became a source of strength. Any form of gratification, including sexual pleasure, required moral justification. Before this time, monkeys and apes had been seen as naughty and entertaining. Now they were seen as despicable. Listen. The male, because Christianity was driven by men... The male instilled hatred of oneself because he hated nature. This might explain why Cain and Abel had the beef that they had, right? 
because Abel was favored for bring, for sacrificing a dead animal or sacrificing an animal, whereas Cain or gave gave offerings. Cain gave fruits and vegetables as an offering. And Abel gave up an animal and that God preferred the animal over the fucking fruits and vegetables. The male has hated nature. The male God has hated nature and sent a all out war against mother nature and promoted death. And then we paint Cain as the bad one and Abel as the good one. Ain't, you see how they done fucked this shit up? They painted Abel as the good brother. God favored his offering of killing an animal. And Cain who offered up Mother Nature's resources. That God spit on it. The male, which is the, the, the creator of fucking Christianity, hated nature and so self-denial became a source of strength. Any form of gratification, including sexual pleasure, required moral justification before this time, before this time, before the Christian shit, monkeys and apes had been seen as naughty and entertaining, but now they were seen as despicable, despicable. Wow. How do you find, how do you find animals Operating in their nature, despicable. Early Christianity taught that sexual behavior, except in the cause of reproduction and within bounds of marriage, was a sin. And although the idea must have been frustrating to most level-headed pagans of the day. It gained currency with the spread of the new religion and is still widely held in the Christian world today. This frustration found some relief in the aggressiveness of the Christians towards other religious groups, most of which were more tolerant of man's natural desires which were more tolerant of man's natural desires. And it showed itself in minor ways too, including man's attitude towards the monkeys. For those characteristics of the monkey that amused the ancients, it's Imitativeness, greed, and sexuality failed to amuse the Christians. These qualities now took on sinister proportions as sins for which the soul of man would be eternally condemned to hell fire. From being an object of fun and games the monkey became nothing less than a symbol of the devil himself. All because man hated himself. Christianity rose out of males looking in the mirror at their nature and hating themselves. Because this is a 
male dominated and male targeted religion. So how can you get love out of self-denial and self-hatred? How can you build anything on that concept? It appears that people are unable to look at nature without prejudice. Tell me that one more time. Say that one more again. It appears that people are unable to look at nature without prejudice. They can't because of the ego, because everybody sees the world through the lens in which they see themselves. And when you see something that reflects you and you've been taught to self-hate, you have a problem and a prejudice with what you see. This, why, this is why religion does no good for the woman. Because nature is female dominated. And nature is the truth. And the truth is God. The truth is feminine. And for a woman to not stand on truth and be in self-denial because she's been taught to hate herself and to despise nature, women become self-destructive. Because why would you hate nature when nature supports your motherfucking existence? Nature supports you. Men don't like to see the animal in them. They're wild beasts. And they know that God is feminine and they wanted to take her place and prove that they could outdo her. They wanted to prove that they could overthrow her. So when they saw who they truly are as animals, the male as the true beasts, they did not want to see that. So they created all of these artificial Things to govern and control the nature of males as much as they could to force it out of sight. Right. They wanted to take they wanted to take the image of God, the divine feminine and put their motherfucking face on it because they knew that they were unworthy. So it appears that people are unable to look at nature without prejudice. We revere animals such as the busy bee that confirm the way we would like to be. And we revel animals such as the gluttonous pig with urges that we seek to suppress. Science is not entirely neutral either. Its attention often ties in with the socio-cultural context of the day. Facts. Facts. Because the people who are doing this research are doing it with the intent of looking for things that support the current socio-economic structure. Hence why biologists back then moved women out the way and focused all on males and eliminated the female out of their research to push the patriarchal 
reality at that point. So now moving into the age of Aquarius, moving into, I appreciate y'all sticking with me for as long as you did. You know, you can catch the replay, right? Right. I won't be on here too much long because it's two thirty in the morning. I'm 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 wired up. I am. I'm, I'm wired up. You know. But this is so good. This so good. I can't find a stopping point. Right. But anyway, this is why as we moving further into the age of Aquarius, that the matriarchy you're starting to see more women pop up in research and stuff. So I was um, talking to another content creator about some of the scientific research that's out here and the push to have women continually volunteer to give up their bodies to males to volunteer to give their bodies up to males repeatedly. So when you start to do the research and look for research, we all know that seminal fluid has some effects that are not good for women. However, because of the socioeconomic or the, the societal structures right now that are trying to push women to continue to copulate with males, when you go look for or Google the effects that seminal fluid have on women, you see the top research is pushing women to, to ingest semen. Ten reasons why it's good to swallow semen. This is what you get. Ten health benefits for semen. This is what you get. They try to push the narrative that semen is good for women. And you're hard pressed to find the actual research on how seminal fluid alters the physiology and brings down women's ability to defend themselves logically against males, right? So science is not entirely neutral either. Its attention often ties in with the sociocultural context of the day. And the sociocultural context of today is still pushing women to voluntarily be with males. Thus, in the post-war years, Students of behavior dismayed by the human capacity for evil were fascinated by the inborn nature of aggression. Thus, in the post-war years, students of behavior dismayed by the human capacity for evil were fascinated by the inborn nature of aggression. And during the revival of free market ideologies and the decline of communism in the 1970s and 1980s, neo-Darwinists uh, elevated the pursuit of self-interest to nature's leading principle. Seen in this light, the bonobo arrives at an interesting turn in history. Seen in this light, listen to me, this is important. Because the divine feminine has been slowly making her way to take over this whole thing, to change it. So if you look at it from the, 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 the position that as society changes or the society, the social cultural structure changes, 
so does the research and what you find seek and ye shall find seek and ye shall find no action comes without a preceding emotion or thought there is always a cause for an effect so where we what we're looking into now what we understand now there was a cause for you to even look into the shit to begin with so if we understand that we can understand how we ended up with the move to the matriarchy as we slowly transitioning into this period right so seen in this light the bonobo arrives at an interesting turn in history. So they find out about the bonobo after all of this other shit start happening, right? The bonobo is a matriarchal society. What have I told you about electronics? First and foremost, I have told you that all of this stuff is feminine, right? The feminine is the mind, right? The higher self is the feminine space, first and foremost. And when you look at electronics, remember I told you that everything, all of the chargers, this right here, this is male, and the device is female, right? We are in an age where you can charge your devices without this cable. We are at an age where you can now charge your devices without the use of this cable. You can charge it with a with this with solar energy you can also put two phones on top of each other and charge the devices between two female devices not only can you charge the phones if you put them on top of each other between two female devices the printer, which is female, and this phone, which is also female, can communicate telepathically, and this could send a command over there and have it print, right, some papers for me without the use of a cable. And now the Y chromosome is disappearing. We are moving into the era of reduced need for masculine quote unquote energy or counterpart because we are entering a complete mind space. Produce. Producer. Production. Right? It's all female. It's all female. In ecology, the producer is Mother Earth, and the and, and the secondary, con the primary consumer, right, eats from directly from the earth. It partakes directly from the earth. Mother Earth is the producer. So when you eat your fruits and vegetables, you go into produce to get them at the grocery store, which in fruits and vegetables are feminine, right? 
the ones with the seeds in it, feminine. So produce, producer, production. Phone has got the female end. The light has the female end. The mic has the female end. The camera has the female end. The computer has the female end. The monitor has the female end. The mixer and the switcher all have the female end. And when you put them all together and they work together, you create a what? Studio production. You create a studio production. The producer, the production all depends on female collaboration. Female collaboration. The value is in the female. And we are entering a period where the female is going to reign. And not only is it showing you that's the case in electronics, before there was a period of time where the queen was not a piece on the chessboard. The queen didn't show up until after a queen came into power and was a very powerful queen and the chess piece made its way on the board. So the, the divine feminine has slowly but surely been making her way in to reclaim what has been stolen from her. And so now you end up with the bonobo society making its way into the eye or to the focus of science, which is a matriarchal primate group. Right. Recent findings seems a belated gift from science to the feminist movement. Recent findings seem a belated gift from science to the feminist movement. They provide a concrete alternative to macho evolutionary models derived from the behavior of baboons and chimpanzees. Secondly, bonobos thoroughly upset the idea that sex is solely intended for procreation. Sex is a sex is a creative powerful tool for energy manipulation and power, right? And the bonobos show you how sex can be used as a powerful source of not only creation, but conflict resolution and domination, which the male wanted to X out in his research to limit it only for procreation so that males could control the power of females. So secondly, bonobos thoroughly upset the idea that sex is solely intended for procreation. From now on, any reference to biology in support of this claim will backfire. If something is so obviously untrue, of an animal that shares over 98% of our genetic makeup, it may very well be untrue of ourselves as well. If something is so obviously untrue of an animal that shares over 98% of our genetic makeup, 
it may very well be untrue of ourselves as well. Yet, even if the psychological mechanisms that allow sexual behavior to be used for purposes other than reproductive de reproduction derived from a common ancestor, the exact role of sex in human society depends on an evolutionary and cultural history that has been separate from that of our closest relatives for millions of years. The most remarkable product of this evolution is the nuclear family. The nuclear family, which is fucked up. Fucked up. I'm going to read this next couple paragraphs and then I'm going to let y'all go to bed. I'm going to, we're going to do it to three o'clock. So that gives us 12 minutes, right? 12 minutes. Because I really want to read this to you about the nuclear family. Because that's where it's going into now. So family values. From a female point of view, listen to this. From a female point of view. Chimpanzee society seems a rather stressful arrangement. From a female point of view, chimpanzee society seems a rather stressful arrangement. Male chimpanzees do share food with females and are most of the time on good terms with them. But they are supremely dominant, and instead of helping out with offspring, they sometimes pose a threat. Bonobo society offers females a more relaxed existence. Females, listen. Bonobo society offers females a more relaxed existence. Ladies, you live in a chimpanzee type society where the males are supremely dominant and they don't help out with your offspring and they pose a threat sometimes. Right? Females, well, bonobo society offers females a more relaxed Existence. Females control the resources, dominate, dominate the males, and have little to compete over aside from their son's careers. The only thing they got to compete over as the females in the damn group is their son's careers. It's always the conflict always center around a goddamn male, right? The rich forest habitat of the bonobo evidently permits such an organization. This is why women need to be in abundance. Women have to be free. Women need to have financial freedom and abundance. And women need to realize that you can get that if you collaborate with each other and stop depending on males like you are fucking chimpanzees. Bitch, you're not a chimpanzee and you don't have to be. You can act like a goddamn bonobo. It's too much opportunity out here in this world for you to be acting like a chimpanzee female. So the rich forest habitat, however, I mean, of the Abonobo evidently permits such an organization. Our ancestors, however, adapted to a to much harsher environments. It is dubious that a Bonobo, a Bonobo like primate could have made it in a savanna habitat while keeping its social system intact. That's real critical. That's real critical that you hear that. 
our ancestors, however, adapted to a much harsher environment. Harsh environments is where males thrive. Ladies, harsh environments is where males thrive. That's why as a human female, if you bring a male into your house, the nature of that male is going to make your house stressful because those are the environments that they thrive in. It is dubious that a bonobo like primate could have made it in a savanna habitat while keeping its social or social order intact. Food is more widely distributed on the plantains. I'm sorry. Food is more widely distributed on the plains. Which means greater travel distances. Especially if many mouths need to be fed. Given visibility to predators. Could females and, and young have ventured far from the forest? Bonobos may be fast, but they are no gazelles. A juvenile bonobo would seem easy prey. Perhaps bands of agile males might have protected the group and helped carry juveniles to safety. Perhaps bands of agile males might have protected the group and helped carry juveniles to safety, but somehow I find it hard to imagine that socially peripheral companions left in the dark about paternity, much like bonobo males, would have been of great help to females. Male chimpanzees, on the other hand, hunt together, engage in warfare over territory. Listen, that's your human male right there. That's your human male right there. Male chimpanzees, on the other hand, hunt together, engage in warfare over territory. And enjoy a half amicable, half competitive camaraderie. Their cooperative, action packed existence resembles that of the human males who, in modern society, team up with other males in co op in corporations within which they compete while collectively fighting other corporations. This is males. That the same delicate balance between internal strife and unity towards the outside is found in chimpanzee males, gives them the most human-like social system of all the apes. Nevertheless, chimpanzees remain far removed from us when it comes to the nurturing the young, which is entirely a female affair. Chimpanzees leave nurturing the young entirely up to females. And the only reason in the human society where it ain't left up entirely to females is based on social programming and force in a lot of cases. Right. But if you leave the male up to his own devices, he don't want to participate in child rearing. If life on the savannah indeed, listen, if life on the savannah indeed induces female reliance on males. If life in the savannah indeed induces female reliance on males. The, the chimpanzee's success in this habitat would have required 
a solution to the problem of forced proximity between mothers and potentially infanticidal males. The current chimpanzee social system is adapted to a habitat with dispersed food sources that allows females to forage on their own. So, if we assume that females and young could not have survived on the plains without some degree of male assistance and protection, Neither the female centeredness of the bonobo nor the relatively independent lifestyle of the chimpanzee would have prepared our ancestors for the exploitation of this environment. Bonobo like and chimpanzee like apes may well have partially ventured into open habitats as some chimpanzee populations do today, but our ancestors are the only hominids who managed to abandon the safety of the trees altogether. Human society is characterized by a combination of one, male bonding, two, female bonding, and three, nuclear families. We share the first feature with chimpanzees, the second with bonobos, and the third is specifically ours. Nuclear families are specifically ours. It is no accident that people everywhere fall in love, are sexually jealous, no shame, seek privacy for sexual intercourse, look for father figures in addition to mother figures, and value stable partnerships. Even Malawinsky's head, uh, hedonic savages most likely were not without these predispositions which reflect our inclination to form exclusive households in which both males and females invest in their children. These reproductive units may be monogamous, but the culturally most widespread pattern for our species is polygyny. That is one male with several females who may live together or apart. We have been adapted for millions of years to a social order revolving around these nuclear families, the proverbial cornerstones of society for which no parallel exists in the great apes. This special feature provided our hominid ancestors with a foundation upon which to build cooperative societies to which both sexes contributed and in which both could feel secure. Only when males can determine with some certainty which young they have sired do they have any reason to get involved in their care. So now you're about to get ready to hear how the nuclear family is really here to benefit the male. Right? And this is how the pop, this is part of how the population boomed to where it's at now, to where it's just unsustainable. So only when males can determine with some certainty which young they have sired, do they have any reason to get involved in their care. Perhaps the nuclear family arose out of a male tendency to accompany females with whom they had made it so to repel infanticidal males. Such a simple security arrangement would have been easy to expand upon. For example, the father could have helped his companion locate fruit trees, capture prey or transport juveniles. He himself might have benefited from her talent for precision tool use. Wait a minute. Back up. Rewind. Rewind. He himself might have benefited from her talent for precision tool use. And the gathering of nuts and berries. 
So you mean to tell me that primates, the females, were proficient in tool use, which also backs up the archaeological findings of women being hunters and them finding tools in the in the graves of women too. The female in turn may have been may have begun prolonging her stir from abandoning her for every good looking passerby. So even in the monkeys, even in the goddamn monkeys, these motherfuckers try to manipulate you with quote unquote protection by forcing you to be sexually open and receptive to them. It's always a sexual exchange. The reason why you're having issues building relationships that actually have any meaning, ladies, because you are literally dealing with an animal on the real. You're dealing with an animal on the real. So. The female, in turn, may have begun prolonging her sexual receptivity so as to keep her protector from abandoning her for every good-looking passerby. Transactional, right? And this is how you get over-sexualization in the human female, in the human female believing that trading her body will keep a guy. This is where this shit is stuck in a woman's brain. Because they actually, this is how they act in motherfucking primates. And what I'm trying to get women to do is become conscious and consciously act different. Consciously make different decisions because in your unconscious state, what you do not realize is that you're behaving like a primate. You're behaving like an animal and you don't even know it. And you don't have to. So the more both parties committed to this arrangement, the more both parties committed to this arrangement the higher the stakes. It became increasingly important for the male that his, that his mate's offspring were his and his only. From an evolutionary perspective, investment in someone else's progeny is a total waste of energy. Hence, males tighten control over their mate's reproduction in direct proportion to the assistance they gave her. This is where your patriarchal shit comes in it. And the more, the more control the male thinks he has, the more control he tries to go for, right? Which is the reason why women need to back up. At this point, you got to back up. You can't have these relationships that you're looking for because you're dealing with animals. Y'all are building relationships on animal instinct, animal programming. In nature, nothing is free. In nature, nothing is free. 
If bonobo females paid for their successful arrangement with almost continuously swollen genitals. Listen, this is why the male asked, could he rape his wife? When they force women to depend on males by stripping her rights away to provide for herself, they forced women into these arrangements. And in the arrangements with monkeys, the female was forced to continuously trade her body In nature, nothing is free. If bonobo females paid for their successful arrangement with almost continuously swollen genitals, <clears throat> hominid females, <coughs> hominid females paid for theirs with the loss of reproductive freedom. You hear that? You hear that? Hominid females, which is you ladies, you pay for this arrangement in the loss of reproductive freedom. The question is, do you want slave? Do you want to be enslaved or do you want freedom? Do you want to be a slave or do you want freedom? Because based on the Bonobo, I done showed you what freedom looked like. I done showed you what female power and freedom looked like in this Bonobo shit or this Bonobo shit. But in these stressful ass environments, you got to trade yourself, which is which which makes your life a living hell. And guess what? You don't have to opt to live like this. You don't have to live like this no more. The reasons for male control. Listen, the reasons for male control only doubled. Listen, the more control they get, the more the fuck they want. So the reasons for male control only doubled. When our ancestors settled down from a nomadic existence and began to accumulate material goods. This is why materialism and consumerism is a no, no and trying to own something that don't belong to you. We do not own planet earth. We are here to share in planet earth because we as women are resources in and of itself. But male control came in here and tried to own nature, tried to own it and hoard it. Thus forcing them or inducing more control. This is why women need to take on a freedom mentality and release control. Release control. So the reasons for male control only doubled. When our ancestors settled down from, the no, from a nomadic existence and began to accumulate material goods. In addition to passing on genes to the next generation, which is a male thing. There now was also the inheritance of wealth. Since male dominance has probably always characterized our lineage. Inheritance tended to take place along paternal lines with every male trying to ensure that his life savings ended up in the right hands. That is the hands of his progeny and obsession with virginity 
and chastity was inevitable. Do you see the evolution from, from monkey behavior to extreme monkey behavior? Right? From regular monkey behavior to extreme monkey behavior. All driven by male rationale. So that is the, the hands of, that is the hands of his progeny and obsession with virginity and chastity was inevitable without male involvement in the raising of offspring. There would be no need for the moral constraints. Listen to me. You hear me? Listen without male involvement in the raising of offspring, there would be no need for the moral constraints sometimes referred to as patriarchy that our species universally employs to safeguard the integrity of the family, right? The nuclear family idea is part of the total destruction of the planet because of the male's ego and his tendency to hoard, dominate, and control Earth's resources. So the key here is to kick out the male involvement in raising offspring to get back to a more egalitarian form of operating with freedom of resource, uh, with freedom in resource access. Because the idea of controlling resources and competition between males, it has caused the entire globe a fucking problem. Talk about extremes. The chimpanzee male is keen to establish which infants are not his. So as to terminate their lives. The male is always looking to kill, own, and dominate. And this is what you have allowed to run rampant across the globe. So you have, you see the evolution. You see the timeline, the evolution of how this shit happened. So women need to give up the idea of the nuclear family. It starts with that. Give up the idea of the nuclear family. Release the idea of competition and resource control. You need to be, your, your philosophy as a woman needs to be freedom. Freedom in every way because this planet was a free will planet and it is no longer free will when you have a male who is driven by fear, dominance and control plus resource hoarding. So talk about extremes. The chimpanzee male is keen to establish which infants are not his so as to terminate their lives. Whereas the human male has evolved a paternal investment strategy requiring that he do everything he can to ensure that he himself, the father of the mate's offspring, the nuclear family increases confidence in fatherhood. The whole thing was set up to give the male a place in society and to nurture his ego, which stripped women's sexual freedom away. This has caused the entire planet a problem because nuclear families encouraged the boom in population. And then agriculture, which is a unnatural practice, also contributed to this destruction. Mm -hmm. 
and the bonobo according to these theories the bonobo has chosen a third way by confusing the whole issue if all males are potential fathers none of them has a reason to harm newborns paternity confusion paternity confusion which is the same method or tactic that lioness lionesses use and so men are fighting to get paternity tests and all of that because again they are monkeys and women have to gain they have to gain their freedom back you have to divorce the idea of these old structures because they don't work no more and they're falling so you need to move into the new way which is matriarchal and female centralization you need to move into that thought process you understand so we've been rolling for six hours and 15 minutes it's 3 18 in the morning i didn't i didn't even first of all i didn't plan on being on here this long but it was so good i can't help it right so um no we're not gonna take calls because it's too late y'all you know when they go back to watch this playback they're gonna be watching the goddamn seven hour live right as if we don't have other seven hour lives but still the whole you know the whole point of the matter is um but um yeah i want y'all to go to sleep on that go to sleep on that think about it and let it seep into your soul right it's a new day it's a new sheriff in town baby all right y'all have a good night and i will see y'all on the next one all right peace out